university. My point for was me, that example he's also to be, an expert. I know, exactly. For me to be like, well, I have a degree in this thing, so therefore I have the authority now to listen to me? No, that would actually be an appeal to authority because who says I have the authority in every aspect in order to have that conversation? I don't. I'm admitting on stream that I don't have a degree. I'm not a doctor. But again, this is why it makes you look bad is because you don't need to be any of those things in order to just type it in on Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever the f*** you use and just look at the charts, read about it. Like, it's not hard. You don't I need a degree. Look bad, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but that's just, it's really silly. You know, just try to do that. Try to go and get us, go funding for your study based on your your personal autodidactic studies of Google no, and DuckDuckGo. I don't need to See do that. that is this funding. how desperate you are? Are you so I'm mad right now so about this, how this discussion okay. went? Hey, 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 guys, Hunter, let me butt in really quick. I just Let's wanted to show you something. Question. I kind of... Let's be completely clear. I am not anti-vaxxer in that against all vaccinations. I am against risky, dangerous, genetically altering, altering vaccines rushed out to production at a dangerous pace to counter a virus with a 99.9% .9 survival threat for most of the population. To be clear, I am not necessarily against you individually volunteering to be part of a medical experiment study, but to force it on me and millions of others is far beyond the pale. This entire thing is far more about enacting World Economic Forum agendas and redesigning society than it is about a specific flu and its effects. Gotcha. The floor is open. Hunter, if you want to start with a response. Yeah, I mean, what do you mean risky vaccine? How is it risky? Well, I mean, you're you're manipulating the genetic code at some level, are we not? Is that not what we're talking about with an mRNA vaccine specifically? Not really, no. I mean, the mRNA vaccine is really just introducing a spike protein into your body. It doesn't actually change your DNA. It doesn't even interact with your DNA at all. So right, but the mRNA is, is a delivery system, correct? Yeah, but it, the way that it works is it's a, a spike protein that goes in there and it builds up. It gives your body like a, a um, artificial experience of like feeling the primary, you know, protein in the virus to build up mm -hmm. immunity against it. That doesn't change your DNA, though. It doesn't interact with your DNA at all. So how is that a risky yeah. vaccine? Other And like, even if it <laughs> did inter interact with your DNA, like it's been proven time and time again to be like completely effective. So how Here's is the it thing. a risky I'm, vaccine? If you want, I'm actually willing to concede that right away, that I do not know for sure that it actually does manipulate the DNA because I am not that level of a scientist. And quite frankly, I don't think you are either. However, what I will say for the risky vaccine is we've already seen the effects become manifest. We've seen myocarditis is the very popularized one, although statistically granted that is rather small. We've seen a lot of videos of uh, various reactions. We've seen a lot of people who were well, we don't know rather healthy videos. and now are not. Sorry, sure, what? so we see a lot of people that were really healthy then got COVID and are still not, right? So we don't know what those videos that you're talking about are attributable necessarily to the vaccine. Those could have just been any number of things that could have happened. Someone could have gone outside. Like at the the way that this thing is politicized at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if some people like stubbed their toe and tried to attribute it to the vaccine. Like the the people are off their rocker on this thing. They're trying to, to you know, blame it, the vaccine for everything that happens. But so can you tell me like okay, give well, me a, wait 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 can you i i i'm still asking right. i'm still asking for like a significant example here of how this is a risky vaccine so we've conceded that it doesn't actually interact with the dna thing so that's off the table both you guys chill out for a second if you're going to ask a question try to be concise so that he has a good a good amount of time to uh to answer you go ahead hunter um yeah, you conceded that you don't know really enough about it, which is fine. I'm not I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I don't know a lot of things either. And I admit that all the time on my stream. Um, I literally opening up. I just talked about something that I got wrong on Twitter. But then you mentioned the negative effects here and you've given me nothing. You gave me what okay. videos you saw of someone um, like. All right, well, yes, that. But we don't have time to watch that. But I'll give you something we do have time for. The official statistics already show what is it? 14,000 they can attribute death to. Right. And they are now if I think I'm correct about this. The, the first two weeks after you get this vaccine, you don't, it doesn't register as a vaccinated individual. You're considered unvaxxed still, correct? Is that right? Is that for the first vaccine or if you get double vaxxed? I think if you're double vaxxed, I think after the second vax, you're still considered not vaxxed for two weeks. I can double check that if you'd like. I Yeah, I, I'm not totally sure. But if so, what how, what does that mean? How does that mean it's a risky or dangerous vaccine? Well, huh. Because, well, okay, so we, we, we have the official numbers of, of damage that's already been done. So we, we know that there's at least 14,000 that have been damaged officially. 
damaged from what? From the vaccine? Harmed. Killed. According so to what the about FDA. the many, what about the multitude of people, the nears like 700,000 of people that have been harmed and killed from COVID? Yeah, I, I really don't believe those numbers to be correct. I think there is a well, lot. Well, I know you don't I'll because, you well, well, the thing is, is when you live in this live in delusional this fantasy of yours that you're in where you don't believe data and you can write things off that are inconvenient for you, I don't expect you to believe those numbers. But the truth of the matter is the COVID uh, virus has killed multiple, multiple people, 700,000 people. The life expectancy has literally gone down in America because of COVID-19. And night nation review is up here saying well i don't believe those numbers why do you not believe those numbers because it's contradictory to what how you feel about it first of all no we still haven't heard about how this vaccine is harmful by the way okay first of all we have we have official reports where they're putting the numbers up and then they're pulling them back down when they have to go through the review and they find out oh crap it's actually not that high it's it's 25 percent less than we reported on for example that was in california i believe in northern california so of course they're going to have some discrepancies and have to make some changes for some of their reporting, of course. But usually the CDC data is pretty accurate and up to date. That's why we turn to the CDC to look at their data tracker at the end of the day. And no, we can see that now the life expectancy in America has gone down because of COVID-19. So you can't tell me that you don't believe these numbers, even if some there have been some discrepancies in California or whatever. Fine. Who cares? So it doesn't right. change the fact that the life expectancy has gone down, right? I'll grant that a lot of people have died from it. I'll also grant that a lot of people die from a regular flu every year, forever. A lot it's more people have died from COVID than have died from the regular flu. Yeah, well, let's get into who those people are who have died. What are their What are their traits? What describes them? They are over sixty five. Typically, they have multiple pre existing conditions. Typically, there's many Those other the, factors. Are, do you really want to get into that? Because, you know, it's usually sure. people that are over 65 and have underlying conditions that die from taking the vaccine and have complications involved in that manner, too. So do you really want to go down that path or you'd have to concede that both ways? At the end of the day, you, you know already that you're wrong in this. At the end of the day, mm-hmm. the effects of yes, the effects of COVID, the effects of COVID are far riskier than any negative effects of the vaccine. So let's go back to how this is a risky vaccine because so far we've had a video and I, I don't know what else was I there. I can show you the how, videos how is we this? have time. I, I mean, don't care about the videos. I, I want to know, right, what, okay, I wanna know why you think that this is a risky vaccine, please. Because for most of the people, that is the most age groups, is not the risk benefit ratio does not work out, period. It just doesn't. You, you have a 99.9% survival rate from my category. For Why do you trust those numbers? Those, you know those are from the CDC, right? Do you no, I'm saying if we go with your numbers, I'm granting you the, the truth of it, even if it's not true. I'm okay. buying okay, into go it ahead. for the sake of argument. All right, go ahead. Sorry. This is the thing we do in philosophy, by the way. Cool. Okay, well, anyway. Anyway, uh, there's a lot to there's a lot to, to go to that risky. But the thing is, it's not I'm not saying that everyone's going to die from the vaccine. In no way do I believe that, nor did I ever claim that. I never mm-hmm. claimed that a lot of people will be fine. But if you look at even other attempts to bring out vaccines like the swine flu vaccine, when it killed a very small amount of people relative to this, they put a stop on it. So why is this one so much more crazy and deadly that we need to just go ahead this with it no matter so, what? Wait, the swine flu? I- I don't know the comparison to how deadly the swine flu was to COVID-19, but even with the, I knew you were going to do this. I knew you were going to hit me with endless sources. Give me the sources. Give me no, the sources. Give I didn't sources. even ask you for his source, bro. No, it's, well, it's, it's not. Fine. You're, asking no, me to, you're asking me to, to search it out live on air. I, I mean, no, I'm not. I, even, it, I don't on. care. It's irrelevant. Hang on. Let's get this back on track. Let's give Hunter a chance to respond yeah, to what sorry, you're go saying. Ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I, I kind of lost my train of thought here. He was saying what? Uh, you were, you were, you were. You, there was a comparison being made between the swine flu. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So the 99% thing, the survival rate, getting vaccinated. It's not all about just preventing death, right? We look at it like, well, your chance of dying. Well, it's not just about dying here. Now, not to mention, if we're going to talk about spooky stories of people that took the vaccine, I've seen some pretty spooky stories of young people that have died from COVID, okay? But also, it's not just about whether or not you live or die. It's about actually being protected from one, you being able to spread it to other people around you, that matters for controlling the pandemic and lowering the rates of infection and lowering the spread. And two, again, why wouldn't you want protection that's safe, beneficial, and effective against a virus? Why wouldn't you want to do that when we know already that COVID-19 can have severe negative long-term effects? It can even cause infertility. 
I can answer that if you want. I do not believe that it provides significant protection. Last I heard, they first they claimed it was 90 something percent, then they claimed it was 73 something percent. Now they're saying, oh, it's more like 39 percent. Oh Second God. of all, I do not I do not buy that it stops the spread. There's been there's been places that have been fully vaccinated, including Harvard University recently, where everyone's vaccinated, and somehow still magically you have outbreaks. Please explain that one to me. Well, there are, of course, going to be outbreaks, considering the fact that the Delta variant is far more contagious. But the reason oftentimes that there is a large amount of outbreaks here actually is because unvaccinated individuals make it so the Delta variant is more effective. Second of all, I'd like to or yeah, more contagious at the end of the day, more likely to cause a breakthrough infection, whatnot. But again, we're not just talking about everything here. We want to look at this on an individual level. You can see that. The people that do go on to get COVID, even the Delta variant, if they have a breakthrough infection, their their uh, likelihood of actually going to the hospital, dying, having any severe adverse effects, greatly reduced, significantly reduced. Yeah, I've heard that narrative from the totally trustable mainstream media. And I've heard but your he's... narrative a million times. You sound like an NPC uh, sure talking have. tree right now. You do. You're like, first they said it was 90 percent. Then they said it was 70 percent. First of all, that's not what they said. There's different efficacy rates and it does wane over time, just like all vaccines. That's how immunity, you know, that's how natural immunity works too, right? No, I that's, understand. That's how this works. So of course Look. it loses efficacy over time, but the 39% number, just so you know, actually was 32% and it came from, I don't even think a non, I think it came from a non peer reviewed uh, study, and that was the lowest on the list. You can look at the multitude of other studies that found anywhere between 70 to 90 percent effective. So don't cite the one lowest study and act and think that you're going to get away with it and that I'm not going to somehow know that there's multitude of other studies that have looked into this. And when you compare it, the general average anywhere between 70 to 90, 96 percent effective. That sounds like a good thing to me. How is this a bad thing? Where's the negative so, thing? Okay. We still haven't heard well, the risky vaccine thing, put, by no, the way. Look, all right. Well, okay. You can put a pin in that one for a second. So let's let's say that was your so you're vaccinated, well, You obviously right? want to put a pin in it because you don't have you any You have to examples. let him respond, Hunter. You have to let him respond. Sorry. Go ahead. See, you're vaccinated. This is no secret, okay? Yeah, so then why would you, I need to be vaccinated for your vaccine to protect you from me, the unvaccinated? Explain that one to me. Simple logic doesn't go that way. So all the other vaccines we had to take as children. I can explain this for you if you'd like. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll get to it after this. Okay. All the vaccines that I took in to go to high, uh, college, um, college, college, but also regular public school, like everybody else, polio and uh, MMR, all this ones, those were fine. And I didn't get any of those diseases after I took them. Transmissibility was a non-issue. Why is it an issue for this one? That's so different. You said, you know, so let's, let's have it. Yeah. So be, again, I'm going to point you again to the Delta variant, right? Could you, I'm sorry, uh, you went off on a tangent there. I was trying to find the thing here. Um, here we go. go Here's the source for you from the, the totally mainstream, the, the totally mainstream media for you. Uh, how do unvaccinated pose a risk to the vaccinated? So there's a couple different ways. One, when you're unvaccinated, you're much more likely to actually be carrying the virus, right? So when you're carrying the virus, if it's the Delta variant, now we, it's like, a, it's a, it's a, uh, um, perfect storm here, right? So you have an individual that is carrying a highly contagious virus and you have an individual who is vaccinated against a uh, alpha variant of that virus, there is still decent efficacy the vaccine gives you against the Delta variant. But since the Delta variant is more contagious, it's obviously more likely to cause a breakthrough spread. So one, that's one reason why you put them at risk. Two, you put it at people at risk if you're not vaccinated and you're anywhere in public around other people, if there's someone who's like immune, uh, Im uh, immune compromised and they're unable to actually get the vaccine, they could be far more susceptible and you put them at risk also. So there are people that are actually like unable to get the vaccine because they have health reasons, no, not because they fell into some delusional rabbit hole of conspiracy theories on Facebook. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I mean, if you remember right, before there was any talk of a Delta variant, which, by the way, is just a rebranding of the Indian variant that came out because they didn't want to you know, sound racist. But also, by the way, cool. you, that wow. came out that came out exactly when at exact point in which everyone stopped giving a shit about coronavirus. I mean, that's a total coincidence, I'm sure. You know, there's a lot of coincidences. There's certainly an outbreak of those. This so do you want to make year. an argument or do you want to tell me a story? Because what you're telling no, me right I mean, now I'm just like telling you that it's story. very interesting that that seems to be the blanket explanation for all this bullshit. And also also, I mean, what do you, what, right, no, no it's not. It's that there's variants, right? So, for example, mm -hmm. you usually get the flu vaccine every year. That's because the there's new variants that come out. 
and also the uh, vaccine loses efficacy, right? Like this is just common and knowledge. This is how uh, building a defense against uh, with your immune system works. It loses mm -hmm. efficacy over time. Even even natural immunity loses efficacy, actually much shorter than the vaccines do. So it it's not narrative and manufacture. So like, okay. I don't really know too much about you. I know I scrolled through your Twitter a little bit and I know that you are kind of into some, what I would consider conspiracy theories. Okay. I'm not putting any sure. label on you. I'm just saying what I would sure. consider to be conspiracy theories. And what it sounds like to me, what you're doing is you're taking a lot of like questions you have, which ultimately sound like they're based on your own ignorance because it's quite easy to find mm. it. If you just, you know, like stop using duck duck go constantly but um there's there's it, it's not actually anything to be that afraid of right so when we talk about like um hold on i'm sorry i do you want to go ahead you know I, I'll, I'll hand the mic over to you again but it's yeah, that's I right mean, i'm sorry sorry I, I, no i'll just build off ahead. what you said so i don't introduce new elements that need to be confirmed or denied with more evidence so what you said about these if well, waning efficacy of a vaccine. Okay, doesn't that sort of set? Well, I'm just talking about more about the public policy because as I established from the very first sentence, basically neither of us are actually really qualified within the kind of worldview you're proposing to actually really talk about the medical dimensions of this at all. No, neither I'm, do you have I, a PhD. I, we, we I don't, don't have a PhD. We don't have, have to be that. We don't. Degree. We don't. You don't have to be qualified. Thankfully, that we have a, a, a multitude of information online, and it's very easy to find some really good uh, sources on this that are well cited from experts it's actually quite easy to learn about this this is the problem is since you're too scared to read the facts you're instead you instead have a lot of questions and then out of those questions you try and construe a narrative a story to try and make it all make sense why is it that people were forgetting about covid when the delta var what do you mean like this is how things go. New variants came out. We were aware of a Delta variant. We were trying to prevent it. It was inevitable that it was going to come here. We'd seen this building up for months. Like, what do you mean it just happened all of a sudden? It sounds like you have a lot of questions and you're just construing a story out of it. No, Hunter, that was a rhetorical device to imply that it came out because they needed it to come out. Because not that Who's variants they? aren't real. Or Who's they? I mean, who do you think, man? The people that are powerful, the people that are powerful in the society. It doesn't matter their so identity. So someone's it manufacturing the vaccine. So someone, so some, let, let's well, get into well, this a little bit because this sounds okay, like so you might not, be off your psychosis pills here. Who's, okay. who's so who are these so people that are controlling? you aware of Fauci in the Wuhan lab. Is that what you're telling me? I don't, I don't get what you're not aware I'm, of. Really I'm aware of, of the Fauci in the Wuhan lab thing, but who's they? The powerful people? They've, they've released a virus? Are, is well, this all? One, the people that fund the Wuhan lab. Let's start there. The people that fund the, the, the one in, uh, in Virginia, I think it is as well. So they say, that's like, so what, that's a conspiracy theory that they do that, even though it's public knowledge? I, no, I don't, I'm not that's not the conspiracy the theory. There. The conspiracy theory is that they have somehow released this virus intentionally Oops, in order to what? Deploy in a, a, a vaccine here? I don't understand. Well, I mean, <laughs> the guy wrote the book on it, the the coronavirus and the Great Reset. So that's what that's a conspiracy theory, even though it's public information. I don't. And what I don't get what you're deliberating. Reason? What's crazy and what's rational? How are you? How are you making that distinction for I'm yourself? I'm looking at like what you're saying and how it actually holds up based on the information that we have available about this virus. So when you tell me things like they just conveniently released the Delta variant, it, to me that. that sounds like you're saying some like say kooky nutty bullshit. And it sounds like deline completely like like a delineation from reality. When we're talking about the vaccine and you're like, it sounds like you don't really know that much about the vaccine either, even. You're just asking me questions this whole time. You're like, tell me why this. Why are we I'm not able to do this? Why, why are unvaccinated people putting vaccinated people at greater risk? There's a really interesting article from factcheck.org. Do you want me to send oh, it to you? Oh, factcheck.org. Okay, please. I'm <laughs> I'm asking like you questions. I'm trying it. to establish what your position is so that I don't have to just ad hominem you and just call you names and all this bullshit. I'm trying okay. to get to some legitimate position so I can talk to you like an adult man. But am I am I going off on a limb with that or tell me? I mean, I, I'm trying to establish something here that it's I can work we, with in good faith. Yeah. So okay, let's talk. Let's let's get back to the basics then. We're here to talk about vaccine stuff. You're anti-vax. I'm pro-vax. Wait, wait, wait. And by, the way, by the way, any of these sources that you have that you want to drop in the private chat, I'll get them into the chat. Yeah, please do establish them. I'll try to give sources to. I got a whole bunch of shit here too to, to offer as well, including. You don't need you to know, go. I, I'm not actually looking to like nitpick through sources throughout this whole time. Great. Instead, I would be much more interested in getting back to the root of it. 
what is the risky part of these vaccines? Let's let's go back to to, to base one. We yeah. put a pin in it, and I'm ready to take the pin sure, out sure. of it now. Okay. So we okay. said that it's bad that people have to take these risky vaccines. How are they risky when they've well, been? There's already to be been established. Okay, there's already been established a number of very serious life-altering side effects, and they are rare on the statistic level of giving it to millions of people. But if you're one of those rare people, your life is done. Basically, your life is messed up for good. Just at like least on some very serious level. Absolutely, just like the people that could have their life get overturned with getting COVID. There are people that have permanent lung damage. There's ways that okay. there's. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. Get ready. All right, we're talking about balls, everybody. There literally is ways that the COVID-19 virus interacts with the testicles to actually cause infertility in some cases. It, you've probably heard it because it's true. Yeah. And right. honestly, so wouldn't that mean that the spike proteins would be doing that if that was no, the mechanism that's that the, happened? That's the beauty of it is the spike protein is not actually the virus, right? It is a, a co like a copy of the virus that they put in to basically trick your body. The Johnson & Johnson virus does use the older style um, but no, that doesn't, the, the vaccine does not put you at the same risks of actually getting COVID. No, I don't think the vaccine increases your risk of getting COVID. I would argue that it's, it's somewhat equal. It's, or very little improvement for the risk of transmission or non-transmission. My, my, my claim there is that we don't truly know the long-term effects. Nobody does, including yeah, you, including all the scientists. No, no, I Nobody know. knows. No, I know. No, no, no. Okay. I'm, so I can say that pretty confidently that I know. Hopefully you and all the other people in my life and everyone else that decided to go along with this experiment are going to be OK. I it's really do experiment. sincerely hope that this you're, you're like unable to even make a single sentence without like lacing it with like conspiratorial uh, conspiratorial. Well, bullshit. Is that really conspiratorial? I mean, how is that conspiratorial? We don't know. We actually don't know. They don't know. They'll tell you that. We do the, know. We absolutely do know. So a okay. lot of the times what you're, it sounds like what you're doing right now is appealing to ignorance. So to the Not people really. that are, yeah, no, yeah, you are. Because to the people that are no. listening, yeah, you are. Because to the people that are okay, listening, sure. they're, they're not sure either. And so it sounds kind of spooky, right? Do you not agree that that's appealing to ignorance a little bit? Well, when I, you say I don't, we I'm not don't doing know. It for that intention. That's certainly not the we, intention. And the reason it. it's appealing to ignorance behavior. is because we do know. You just don't. You just I don't, don't know. know. I don't no, fucking no, no. think that's you true, dude. You just don't know, my no, friend. No, I don't. So I, I don't know, and you don't know. No, you I, don't know the long term effects. And the scientists that you consider no, the officials do. don't know what the long term, -term effects? effects. Have we ever seen long? Can you tell me? Can, I have a quick question. There haven't been studies, dude. Quick question. Have we ever seen long term? Quick question. Have we ever seen long term, like 10 years later? negative effects from a vaccine ever yeah from some regular vaccines that is rare 10 years down the line here. ever has that ever happened can you give me one example please i have to dig it up but yeah there have been some that's why they have really the compensation it's my understanding there haven't actually been a sing it's my understanding that there actually hasn't been a single one in history and that's because usually vaccines cause if they are going to if they do cause uh underlying or like significant problems at the latest, it's like two months after the vaccine. Now, for your information, the reason you're appealing to ignorance is because you're scared yeah, simply because okay. the, the reason is because you're scared simply because you don't know. So the mRNA vaccine, for example, has been being tested. Human trials began back in 2013, dude. Like these have been All going right, on so for quite a long time. Do mRNA was, vaccines okay. have been have been being experimented on for quite a long time. Human trials began in 2013 and oh, an actual it. That's a real long time. That's a real long you, time. That, what is that? It's fucking it's, like eight years. Give me a break. They, we, we just don't said have, 10 years. Holy shit. What do you think? It's going to be dude. like 20 years. All of a sudden we all turn into zombies. I what didn't say mean? zombies. I didn't say anything like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like this that, is, this is what works. Rhetorical. No, no, no. It's, it's obvious that this works on you because you're appealing to ignorance. We don't know what might happen in 20 years. You don't know what might happen in 20 years every time you take an aspirin. Okay. We don't know. What's going to happen in it's 20 not, years with anything? That's a very big but false the, equivalence, and you know it. But with, it's actually not. When you take, when you take medi no, when you take medications, you pretty much always compare the benefits and the risk, right? So we all know that there's negative side effects when you take medication. There can be, but that doesn't always deter you from taking that. It absolutely is comparable. You haven't told me how this thing is risky. All you've told me is yeah, we actually, don't know, okay. therefore it's spooky. I didn't say it's spooky either. I said that what could happen is I'm very sorry. I was hyperbolizing there a bit. Scale where you're you're doing something to the genetic system. You're using messenger or your RNA to make an alteration. We don't know on a long time scale the results of that because we haven't had a long time scale to measure and chart the results. And then so be really honest eight years with the data isn't analysis. enough for you. Eight years isn't enough for you. 
Not really. Considering, not to be that, sure. considering that the majority of vaccine uh, side effects show up minutes to like two months after taking the vaccine max. The question is, why would I why would I take the risk when I have basically no risk statistically of dying from COVID? So why would it's I take it? It's not just about dying. You have statistically. Okay, from hold on. Sick enough statistically, that it matters, you dude, guy. you tried. No, no, no. You tried to say the 99.9% survival rate. Your likelihood of actually dying from a vaccine is like 0. 0.000 out of 31,000. So don't come in here and try to cite stats and then back up into this we don't know thing. Okay, come on. Stop. The mRNA vaccine has been studied. Anyways. It has been researched. It has been proven to be safe and effective. OK, you've given me nothing so far. You've you've appealed to ignorance. How is it a risky vaccine? That's the first thing on my notes here. We're not even able to get through it. How is it a risky vaccine? Well, let's say you're trying to, you're going to give it to everybody, right? That's the mandate. So that's what we're here to argue about, the mandates and the social effect, not the science, because neither of us know you're not no, a no, PhD. No, I'm not no, a PhD. No, I didn't actually. I, I made a pretty Where'd clear, you go to medical school, Hunter? Where did you do your doctorate? Please tell me. I want to know because I'm getting went, fucking pissed off now. So so I talked to Andrew, and I said that I wanted to talk to the uh, – I wanted to talk, talk about just vaccines. I heard you were anti-vax, so I said, all right, well, I'm very pro-vax, and clearly you have some very valid concerns. You've said that this is a risky vaccine. So far, I just don't know what's so risky about it. If you ask me, it's okay. risky to get COVID. If I could just really quickly cite a um, – Sure, sure. Just real quick. I think that it's fair in a debate about vaccines. There is a social impact that comes with it that would be comparable to the risk. So I think that it's valid if he brings that up, Hunter. I, yeah, I think – okay, that's fair. I think that if we want to talk about mandates, that's fine. I'm, I'm happy to talk about that. But I have a feeling that it's ultimately going to come back to you don't want it to be mandated because you believe it to be a risky vaccine. So I think that it's really necessary to get to this fundamental thing first. Let's focus on okay. what – Yeah, that's also fair. If he wants to assess the risk of the vaccine first and then move on to further risk besides that. I'm he's fine got, with that. He's I, got this... a point, Hunter, or, uh, uh, NNR, you know. <laughs> he does have I understand. I understand. So to me, the risk, the, we speak of the risk, we're speaking of the risk benefit analysis, right? And I'm saying that for me and for a lot of people, the risk benefit analysis does not make sense. The calculus doesn't make sense. Now, there are people I'm certain that that does make sense for, especially people that are over a certain age bracket, probably about 65. So how there are people who sense? are fragile. Based on, like you said, they have pre-existings that make them more vulnerable. Okay, and like I actually started this with is I am not against you doing it yourself. If you want to go out and voluntarily do that, God bless. I hope it goes well. But I, other than that, I'm not saying that this is genius. I really mean it. But the thing is, is I don't want a government that I do not trust. And I wouldn't trust it if it was Trump, too, by the way. So let's make that clear, too. Okay. I don't trust a government that has been not good for a lot of ways to go and tell me that I have to take a medical exper experiment that I consider an so experiment. So okay, let's stop there. Right there. So, so the okay, experiment right, thing, it's not an experiment. By, like, literally, and I'm not trying to be pedantic here, but you keep saying that now. And by definition, it is not an experiment. It has gone through all the necessary processes. It has had all the data collected. Yeah. The FDA has properly properly vetted uh, this this has been studied again since 2013 on humans right. and just to be clear a vaccine for covid in general has been being researched and developed for like 50 some years okay it just so happened that it was kind of a viruses yeah because coronaviruses yeah. right exactly there's different yes. versions of it but it kind of worked out as a perfect storm so I just don't know how this is really a risky vaccine you say the cross risk benefit no if we were going to go by that extreme logic then you would be a hypocrite every time you drive in your car because your likelihood of dying in yes your likelihood of dying in a car equivalence, man. no it's not it is not go ahead type in google right now likelihood of dying in a car crash it is one in 107 30 000 a year it's one in 107 that is your likelihood go ahead and type it in i'm doing it you what is say, your... the likelihood of dying from the vaccine is what you want me to compare it to one in 107. So yep. what do you want me to compare it to the vaccine? Like, like your likelihood of, of dying from the va from dying from a vaccine is like less than oh, okay. one in 31,000. So again, okay, if we were going to go talking about all vaccines, we're talking about the COVID mRNA vaccines. I'm only the... talking about the mRNA. I'm not talking about all the other shit you had to take when you're kids. COVID-19 vaccine specifically. Okay, let's try that one. So when we compare these things, it's obvious that. It's completely hypocritical. Your likelihood of dying from a vaccine is like – it's unfathomable. Like you said, it's most likely to happen to someone who does already have underlying conditions. And for those people, it's well and justified that they might not want to get the vaccine. I think that – here's the, here's my, my general thesis, and it's that if people – 
uh, have a medical exemption and a doctor tells them they can't get the vaccine, you know, maybe they have blood clots, maybe they're on blood thinners. There are some risks there for people that are on certain medications where the vaccine might not be the best thing for them. It's a medication. And again, you do have to look at the benefits and the risks. But at the end of the day, the likelihood of you having any adverse effects from the vaccine is ridiculous. In fact, the uh, a recent doctor even came out and said your likelihood of dying from the vaccine is comparable to your likelihood of being struck by lightning. So it is ridiculous. That. Well, it's true. So it's ridiculous for you That's to come on. That's a big claim, dude. You gotta, you gotta, if you're going to give right, those sure. kind of claims, I'll you got to give us some you. real evidence. All right, sure. You know, not lefty. It doesn't have to be right wing, but not so lefty that it's insane no, either. No, it's not. That, it's that's, it's oh, like a high. local that's... doctor that came out and was and, and compared the rates. So, I'm trying. I'm yeah. trying to still trying to find that number. By the way, on comparing it to was one in one out of 107 for the car accident. And they're claiming, oh, here it is. So fullfacts.org. I don't know what the origins of that is, but it says the risk of dying from a COVID vaccine is lower than one in 31,000. If that's yes. true, then that sounds great. I do not. I personally, I can't buy that. Because I don't know what's going into that. I don't know who's paying for this. I don't know website. what their agendas are. Can you please drop that link for us so that we can get yeah, it? Please, yeah, please, please. Yes, I'll give you, and I'm still trying to find the uh, one thing about the struck by lightning thing. I know I have it somewhere here in my notes, so give me a second. Okay. Let me just rant a little bit while you look for that. Please, no. So well, the whole issue here, the whole issue here really does come down to the fucking mandates. No, do it doesn't. The keep... whole issue is okay, that you well, don't because you think if, that the if mandate... you do want to move past to get to the mandates. I don't. For... I really I cannot. Just let I me cannot. finish. Hunter, let me finish. If you do want to move past the risk assessment for the vaccines to try to get to the mandates, it's fine. But you'll have to concede this portion of the debate in an arc. Oh, OK. All right. Well, then. All right. Let's go ahead and get back to the risk assessment. I'm not conceding that one. Um, I, I, I don't know. The problem is I have to really look into these these uh, particular organizations and they may be good. I don't know. But, you know, this is a, a specific avenue that I didn't know you were going to want to go down in particular. I thought it was sort of a, a known thing. But, I think uh, I mean, I thought it was pretty. I at least thought I made it clear that. OK, right here from Fox. Oh, here no, we go. Wait, Fox wait. 17. Nashville, okay. Nashville doctor. Odds of. Oh, wait, here. Let me put it up on my screen here. I'll send it in the thing, too. Uh, odds of death from COVID-19 vaccine is the same as being struck by lightning. Based on data okay. from CDC, vaccine adverse event reporting, right, let's see, points out that about 0 .00, 17% of people or two to five persons per one million. According to the CDC, the odds of being struck by lightning are two in one million. So there you go. So yeah, well, I I'd be okay. happy to drop this in there too, but... Please Again, do, but you're likely right. actually dying from the vaccine. It's not there. So we need okay, to talk wait. about we wait. need to talk about okay. why, because obviously you're against it being mandated. That's fine. But the reason you're against that is because you find it to be harmful. We're not up here arguing about whether or not seatbelts should be mandated because you They're probably not the, same. not the same. No, they actually are very com completely comparable, actually. Because uh, they're yes, they're both preventative measures that you take. They don't. Wait a minute. Should we finish the other one before we move on to seat belts versus vaccines? This is part of it about the general risk of it. But well, here's the thing: you're telling like me you there's a risky said, vaccine, and you still haven't given me a really good reason why it is. Well, like you yourself said, death is in no way the whole picture here. We do not. When I say we do not know what's going to come of the vaccine, what I do, what I mean is that there are going to be things that come along, and this has to happen basically based on the numbers of people they've given it to, like autoimmune diseases, probably cancers, these kind of things. And we don't know. That's what I mean when I say we don't know. I mean we don't know what the numbers, the risk mm -hmm. is for that. So it's going to happen to we, somebody. No, we to. we kind of do compare, con considering that we can look at this historically and see that there has never been a time in history where vaccines actually led to long term effects outside of. <laughs> like two to three months or uh, I think it was like there's one no to two other months, mRNA right? vaccines dude there's no other well, MRNA vaccines at the vaccines. end of the day do you have okay let, let me let me just please okay. give me another one show me another no, 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 because what you're hold on stop it. because what you're doing okay. right now is you're saying you're saying oh well uh we don't know this okay can you tell me something you do know then give me that give me a risk you do know other than we don't know that this thing might happen fine well, well the one we don't know the long-term risks of covid then the one that there, comes to mind quickest is for is for uh, young people, basically a little bit younger than you, that get the, the mRNA vaccine. In fact, Sweden and Denmark stopped the Moderna because of the myocarditis. Now, that's just one of many issues, but that's the one that's the most obvious in the moment on the hot seat while we're doing a debate. I could, I'm sure if I wanted to sit here for an hour, I could so think of a whole when, bunch more when shit. Does that, do you know when that thing like goes away, generally? 
Uh, I, let me see. I'll pull up the article. I think it was in my notes somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. Because it's my understanding that it's like usually goes away on its own. It's usually not very severe. And again, yeah, that's a risk that there could be there right there. And okay, that's but a fair risk, but it's not anything that's like a deadly risk. And it's nothing that doesn't really just resolve by itself. It even said, yeah, yes, st stop shaking your head. You can look at it on the CDC. No. Yes, no, you no, can no. look at it wait, on the wait, CDC. Wait, 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 wait. The majority, wait. hold on. Yo, the majority of these people, they do not have to even go to the hospital at all. Like it, it resolves on its own. I read that. Some of them, that will be the case. And that's fine. And if that's the case, then maybe it's not that big of a deal for them. But for others, they will be massively affected. Like their lifespan will be shortened. So what I don't you're know telling what the number me right is, now, so. So since nothing at all is ever 100%, that sounds like you're telling me that's the good enough reason for why it shouldn't be mandated. So I could just okay. as easily say, let's go back to the seatbelts thing for a second. Okay, Sometimes sure. there are people, now granted, it's rare, but there are people that have gotten in car accidents and they are strangled by their seatbelt. Mm -hmm. And they're unable to get out and they die in a car fire or whatever. Like the seatbelt actually killed them there. So maybe yeah. we shouldn't mandate seatbelts then. Because that person, see, it doesn't sound like a big deal to you, but to that person, their life is cut short. Like, we can make this argument with everything uh, at the end of the day. Some people, yes, are going then. to be negatively affected slightly. But again, what's the risk of developing okay. myocarditis? Hold on, wait, 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 wait. I have something important to say. All right, go ahead. What's the up. develop? What's the likelihood of getting myocarditis or having heart issues in general from getting COVID? That's another thing you need to look at, too. You said it was a cross-benefit analysis thing. Well, mm -hmm. here we go. That's important. I'm sure, there's some, I'm sure there's some risk of that, too. I don't know what that is, so I'm going to have to just concede that I don't know. That I can't know everything. But here's the thing about the seatbelts, right? You can reverse a seatbelt decision. You can just you could choose not to, and you can choose to risk it, and you could choose to get a speeding ticket with a seatbelt fine. But you can't undo the vaccine, that the mRNA thing. It's permanent. It's forever. You can't you can't go back. There's no undo. And there's well, no there's, there's you know, no you can't get just fine. But there's no need to undo it. Like it's it's kind of like a payload, right? Disagree. Like it just it, it just well, I know you disagree, but like there's no it just you give the injection and it goes in and it delivers like the dose that's necessary. You build up immunity and then it's kind of that's and then it's kind of just gone. It's your body kind of discards it. That's why, by the way, you don't see a lot of like long term negative side effects with vaccines. That's why, again, to my understanding, there's never even been one in history. So I would be, again, like, I, it's just, it just sounds like you're not able correct. to tell me. It sounds like, it sounds like there are so many okay. like contradictions here because you drive in your car, dude, that's a likelihood of killing you. But like, yes, but I'm choosing to take the risk. Nobody's stopping me, but you're Nobody's forced to wear the seatbelt. Yeah, I don't. I am pretty libertarian on that too. By the way, I don't necessarily think there should be seatbelt laws. I think it's wise to do it, but I don't think that you should have the government step in to make you protect your own life. So what I don't about think drunk the government driving? Should own your body. Why is it unfair that people are not allowed to drive drunk? Because that risks risk. other people. But the problem with your vaccine comparison with that is that this does not stop transmission, and that is really That's well established. I'm sorry. No, it is. This, no it it's is. not at all. Are you kidding me? The way that you transmit it, you have to – Wait, wait, want. wait. In order to transmit it, in, in order to transmit it, you first have to actually get COVID. It greatly reduces your risk of getting COVID to begin with. And then if you are to actually get it, you're less likely to suffer any long-term side effects or go to the hospital or die. Right. So, n no, the not getting the vaccine puts people at risk also, just like yeah, not know. just like drunk driving puts people at risk. It's your body, your choice. Why does the government get to say what the fuck you get to do with your body? Who is the government uh, to say shouldn't. that? Who's the government to say that you're not allowed to take the risk? Maybe you want to drink some alcohol. Okay. And drive in your car. You own it. It's your property. Wait, Why? wait, 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 wait. Because because it doesn't just affect you, and that's not cross to but the. But that to works the, with the, the, the vaccine too. Not you know it does. Yes. Not the same, man. You put people at risk. You raise the. <clears throat> excuse me. You raise the risk of breakthrough infections for people that are vaccinated. You raise the risk of people that can't get the vaccine for being immune and compromised, and you raise the risk of there being new variants because when people are getting COVID and they're becoming hotbeds, breeding grounds for this shit, then. It's inevitable and it's been shown already. So again, I have charts okay. that show the hospitalization rates and there's uh, for people with COVID, sorry, and they are skyrocketing for people unvaccinated and they are completely stagnant for people that 
are vaccinated. People that are unvaccinated are filling up the hospital beds with COVID and they no, are that's the story. and they are dying from this vaccine. This has even been demonstrated in England, okay? So maybe I don't know, maybe they dying control from the vaccine, over there too, said? but that's weird. Yeah, this has even been confirmed in England. Like dying this is from the vaccine. That's what you just said, or just you have a Freudian slip or some oh, mistake. Oh, I'm sorry. Or... Did I have, did I make a? Did yeah, I... You did, but I, maybe that was just the linguistic. Sorry, uh... I, I may have made a mistake there. <laughs> okay. My, my well, okay. Here's the thing, man. Here, let me let me concede something. If this vaccine was a hundred percent, or not even a hundred percent, let's say it was ninety percent successful at really blocking out transmission, and I don't believe that it is at all. I don't believe there's statistics and evidence that can support that. But if it were, then I would take it but I don't think it is. I really don't. I don't think it's supported. I think I can pull up a lot of instances where the spread happened anyway. Cruise ships where everyone was vaccinated still spread. Harvard just closed down because everyone was vaccinated still spread, et cetera, et cetera, know, et cetera. Dude, this is because of the Delta variant, which is here to begin yeah, with because I, of people like you right. that oh, are too like afraid. Me, yeah. Yes, because of people that are too mm. scared to go and get a shot that they are putting other people at risk. This is generally, com oh, this is completely, right. hold on, wait, this is completely. Hey, hey, Hunter, Hunter, calm down with the people like you. We don't do discrimination on this channel. Racist, dude. I'm sorry, I meant anti-vaxxers. No, no. Okay. You know, right. he was, he's, just he's just playing, he's just playing with you. Okay. Breaking, we're breaking, yeah, up, breaking it, it up with Breaking up the a tension bit. a little bit. I, I appreciate it. The problem <laughs> okay. is, is that I now am, I, unless I keep like good notes, I'm gonna lose my train of thought again. Um. No, you're but, saying anti-vaxxers in air quotes like me are causing more Delta and more variants. Yes, there's more oh, Delta for, okay, variants. Wait, and so, for example, the, wait, stop. So, for example, the cruise ship thing, right? You brought up the cruise ship thing in the midst of what you were saying here. And, yeah, the majority of people there were vaccinated, but you didn't look at the rates of children who can still carry the virus and are unable to get vaccinated. If you look at the rates of children there, it's very likely. I think there were some, like, hundred children there that were all able to be carrying the virus and were unable to get vaccinated. So that's something you're, right wait, there. Hold on. So, so that's your something is that children spread it, basically. It, they absolutely could have, especially oh, considering no. the fact that the Delta variant is far more contagious and has been shown no, to have higher rates that. of infecting children. So again, when I'm able to look at these facts, I'm able to form like a holistic view of what's going on and how this makes sense and why getting vaccinated is important because ultimately it protects people around me and it lowers my risk significantly from dying in the hospital. People that are unvaccinated are like 11 times more likely to die heard from COVID-19. You've heard it? Uh, oh, is this your rebuttal? Is this, this your shows best out rebuttal on the here? Media constantly, and I don't believe it, and I think you'll show me something, but I don't believe that those people who are trying to measure that are actually doing a sincere and honest job is analyzing this your these best statistics. Rebuttal? I don't they're believe trying it? To get to that, okay. They're trying to get to that result. They're solving for you. more vaccine, more vaccine, more I vaccine. I don't believe you. Okay, well then why don't they just use stuff that was very cheap and very available, say ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, remdesivir, et cetera, et cetera. I don't buy that. Sorry, no. I don't buy it. Which which don't you buy? What part? I, just, I don't buy it. Which thing? Is this going to be a rebuttal to everything? Where like I, I'm giving you hard hitting evidence that absolutely destroys what you're mm. telling me, and Not then you're really. saying I don't buy it. Is that really your your best response here? I'm saying that the, we would have to dig deeply into how they got those numbers we, to come up with whether they're full of shit or not. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> And I do don't you believe think, do you believe that okay here's a better question do you believe times? that you have the qualifications to determine whether or not those numbers are full of shit no, I it's kind of started with that. I said that okay, we don't. so then it's really okay. irrelevant. We don't need to be digging through any numbers at all. And we should probably trust the experts on this, considering they uh, hire no. th tens of thousands of individuals to collect this uh, this data, and it's done in a very, like, concise uh, uh, way. So, yeah, I, I think that we could— think this is a cult hunter because you just trust these experts. And just because they have credentials like Anthony Fauci, you know the guy that came up with this PCR test said he was a fraud and he was an idiot and this it's kind of funny stuff. That you you say say I'm the one in the, it's funny that you say I'm the one in the cult, yet this entire time I feel that I'm very grounded in facts. I've been able to cite statistics consistently and demonstrate and well. demonstrate why the vaccine is not at all risky and it's far more risky to actually get COVID. By the way, you still haven't Hold actually on, told me why it's a risky vaccine. So did. you tell I me said, that it's okay. all I'm in a cult, but like you're the one who's living in this right, like let's... fearful world where the elites are all orchestrating the Delta variant to force us to get the all vaccine. Right. Okay. So in order to attack that, you have to suggest that the these elites, whoever they are and for whatever reason, you're trying to say that these people don't plot things behind closed doors you're really going to say that like honestly no what you that's the a world complete, economic yeah, what you're, you're doing, doing right now is backing up what you're doing right now is backing up to a much more moderate position to defend a stupid position that you don't actually want to defend do you think that people ever plot things behind closed doors 
I don't mean people. I didn't say I mean that. Them. I mean the, the elites, however that is characterized. <laughs> okay. Either All way, right. I we're just we're I feel like we have been looping a little bit. I know we've been talking about for 40 yeah, minutes. It's true. been fun, but it's because it's kind of just why don't been... we go to look, why don't no, we move on to the mandates? No, the mandates. you want oh All dude, right. you want All so right. badly to pivot because you No, it's fine, no, whatever. If you, if you want to concede the first portion of this, that's fine. And then you can just move Nick, on you to have to concede portion. that the vaccine is uh majority safe. Overall uh, I, safe. I still don't buy it, not convinced. All right, okay. well then, why don't we just now, go on to the Q&A then, now because I think this well, guy's hang on, beyond hang on, Hunter. It is acceptable, though, as you've said, it is acceptable to talk about further risk besides just the vaccine risk, if you're talking about the risk of the vaccine. So there are outlying factors that can go into this as well. We've got about 20 minutes left. Uh, there's no reason not to get into those as far as it, I can see from my end. Is there some reason you don't you don't want to or I just the reason I don't want to is because we haven't moved past what he's is claiming is a risky vaccine. Well, that's true. And that is ultimately what is going to come back to the reason he's against the mandate. OK, well, you wouldn't be against that. mandating something if it was 100 percent. No, we've and seen never a lot of evidence issues. of it. We've seen people have seizures. People the myocarditis is the obvious one. There's a lot of other ones. But I, do you really want if you want, I'll sit here and figure I'll find this, the there's delicious. the same likelihood of you having that or sorry, there's a much greater likelihood of you getting those same symptoms or worse from COVID again. Like, and true. what do you mean? People who have seizures like what is there? Uh, lots and lots have of you videos, seen videos? Like hundreds like, and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Okay, so do we know that that was actually because of the vaccine necessarily? Oh, uh, right. it just it's someone... just an outbreak of coincidence. I forgot. Sorry. It's, it's very confusing, you know. Well, I'm sorry. You were the one that told me it was just a perfect coincidence the way the Delta variant came out. You seem very strange to suddenly be against coincidences here, but. Okay, oh, sarcasm, man. <laughs> okay, I got it. It's just seems okay. Wh wh why don't we just let's let's we can talk about the mandates, I guess, but I really don't want to pivot to that because I think that Nick here wants to move okay, on because wait, he knows wait, that wait, he wait. has absolutely no defense. He has no leg to if, stand on. Here. If he keeps it confined to the risk as associated uh, with the vaccines, if the if he can do that, then it's appropriate for him. Yes, to Nick, bring you need to concede. Up. Yes, I think that's fair. Nick, you need to concede to me that I am right and that the vaccine is overall majority safe and effective. No, I do not concede to that. But also, by the way, so let's, just, we let, let, let's just do this. Let's just do this. Why don't we'll we just, just jump into the, the Q&A? I think this guy's outside of reality here. I don't think he's No, you're outside of reality, bro. Look, here's the thing. Why don't we just stick with yeah. the myocarditis? Because that's the one that's easy to prove. It's easy to talk about. We know it's real. No, 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 stop. Okay? Both of you guys, listen, listen closely to what I'm saying. There are risks associated with the vaccine that may not necessarily be 100% due to taking the vaccine. If you can confine your line of inquiry to whatever those risks may be, you don't actually have to concede the point one way or the other, it doesn't matter, but you, you have got to make sure that it's confined to risk, which is the topic of the debate. That's what's fair. Well, I, I did share the I did share the actual medical uh, study there from MedRxIV.org. Um, it says SARS-CoV-2 mRNA vaccination against myocarditis in children, and then it goes on to talk about the risk of the myocarditis. And then there's another article. I'll dig that up, I guess, about why Sweden wow. and Denmark are stopping this for teens because it's very risky for them. So the problem with the mandates, which we can get to if you really do want to, is that they're going to apply it to them too. And so for some percentage of these teens, it's going to change their life in a very negative way, whether you like it or not, whether you agree with that or not. Now, it's, of course, it's not going to be everyone. Some will be fine. But that's you're sacrificing those teens that are affected on the altar of progress. So just know that. you, In a way, you could say you have blood on your hands for doing that, even if it's a small percentage in the, in the big scope of things. You're, you're doing that train rally, uh, train, you know, the, the train. Do you run over five people and pull the thing, or do you run over the one person? It's, it's that dilemma. I forget what you call it, but, you know, there's, there's that thing. I'm trying to look through the thing. Um, that Let me look and see if I can because find the one. It talks about, yeah, like we, we already know that myocarditis is a potential risk, right? But like, not really again, potential, though. It's already happened for a lot of people. No, 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 it's not no, a potential. No, no it, it hasn't actually happened for that many people. According to the study that you said, a total of 257 were identified rates per million following dose two. Yeah. Okay. So it's so it was like a very small, small right? amount of people no, that actually okay, had this, and that. also they didn't. Let's keep in mind that if you look at it, there was um, a three point five times higher 
hospitalization risk. We're not looking at death here. We're not looking at people that are getting killed. And I know that it does go further than it's not just about death here. But also we're talking about something that often and in most cases goes away on its own, okay. doesn't require hospitalization and also doesn't really lead to long term effects. Whereas getting COVID again can cause lung issues, heart issues that do lead to long term effects. So I'm I just to focus on one point at a time here to, to try to meet your I'm demand not, for evidence. I'm not so, trying. I'm not. I didn't even make a super strong demand no, you're, for evidence. No, but you're, you're you're introducing COVID itself to counter the fact to say that COVID is just as risky of causing these things as this. That may be true, yes. but I don't know because I can't analyze it. So you have to kind of stick with this. I'm saying that some percentage, something like something like 12 or 13 percent of the kids who do get the myocarditis, they're going to have a shortened lifespan to something like six years. They're not going to be able to play sports. They're not going to have be able to have sex regularly they're not going to be able to do things that require intensive workouts and if they yes, do they're going to fucking die this is sad my dude there are things that happen though that are like negative side effects that happen with virtually every single medication and there are also people that whose lives young people too whose lives are going to be negatively impacted because they got covid we've already seen that happen it's pure utilitarianism you, for you that's no, what it is it's it not actually utilitarian. utilitarianism yeah, that's what you're saying it's, it's utilitarianism you're the one that it, I, i'm sorry i thought that you, I, I apologize maybe i thought that you were the one that introduced the cross benefit analysis thing we're, we're supposed to get i did there, right i did so if we're comparing taking the vaccine what is the risk getting the vaccine versus getting covid we kind of have to compare those things right that's obviously how we're going to most accurately determine this risk also my chat could be wrong but people are saying that that article you sent me wasn't peer reviewed i don't know if that's true but this article is a preprint and has not been peer reviewed peer reviewed there's many others i'm sure that are plenty peer reviewed for the peer review spurgs in the chat or whatever i it's you know, the problem it's is just, it's always going to be somebody weird because that's you're, not happy. It's weird because you're like, no, the data, the evidence is all bad. All the, and then it's like, why do you send me like not the really lowest said, hanging but... fruit type? Ev I don't know. I'm not asking for what? you to send me a bunch of articles. I'm just asking sincerely, what do you believe to be to make this vaccine like the risky vaccine? We've talked about the myocarditis thing. Usually resolves itself okay. on its own. They, What's, okay, what okay, else is here's there? the thing just in general just in general they rushed it out it was done very quickly they did it on some very suspicious circumstances and timeline we don't know anything about the long term nobody really does We've and the experts that your experts say this too by the way not just me they even said also the in the original thing when they first started releasing these they admitted that oh it's not going to stop transmission but it will you know it'll make the symptoms less bad and you won't go to the hospital that's what they claim publicly on public media Sure. All over so the place. I, I would have to again look into that, but uh, I mean, Me yeah, too. Inf inf information, information, you know, changes all the time, so that's quite possible. Mm -hmm. When you say that it's rushed, I'm not really sure what you mean. I mean, the warp process. Speed. They literally call it warp speed. Well, yeah. Well, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. The process <laughs> okay. was obviously sped up, yes, but when you say that it was rushed, that implies that it was like corners were cut and that's just not the case corners were uh, not cut in fact even if you want to look at how the fda process was expediated it wasn't done by cutting corners it was actually by uh done by hiring more people on the job to get this thing rolling asap that's part of what the emergency uh authorization thing does also that plays a role in helping them roll it out faster when we're in times of crisis with pandemics like this so when you say uh, just to make it clear when you say it's rushed you make it sound like it was like corners were cut in order to get there. Okay. But no, I mean, if you want to say the process was ex expedited, then yeah, absolutely. That, that's well, correct. It certainly was. But also you're going to the well, FDA approval thing. thing, right? But they approved comirnaty. But the, uh, Pfizer is not the same as comirnaty. And that, that's been intentionally obscured and conflated to the public on purpose. What you're getting, if you go get a Pfizer jab, it's not – Comirnaty. But what so, they approved again, is not, Comirnaty. Sure. So I'm not saying that the FDA, every single decision they've ever made is perfect, but usually, and we can look at this again throughout history, their standards are actually growing pretty, uh, even more rigorous. So again, it's not just about the FDA though. It's about this vaccine being given out internationally. We have international statistics showing that the vaccine plays a significant risk or uh, plays a significant role in reducing the risk of people getting COVID and then going to the hospital, et cetera, et cetera. It's not just the FDA. Even if you were able to successfully discredit the FDA entirely, it doesn't change anything. Internationally, this vaccine has been recognized as being effective and beneficial. 
Except where it hasn't. In some places, it's been, like I just said, like I can show you the articles of, has been withdrawn on a pause in, in these places because of the myocarditis specifically. But it's, it's also the thing that, okay, so, so you're trying to pin down that the threat of COVID is bigger than any threats that are going to be offered by the vaccine. That's, that's the crux of the whole thing. So uh -huh. if you can prove to me that for most people, that is to say people from, I don't know, age five, which they intend to give it to, by the way, very soon, to age like 65, which is most of the population, if that age group is at bigger risk of dying from COVID than the vaccine, then maybe then you win that point. But I, I just, I don't, I don't know that that's true. Maybe it is. I doubt it though. I it really doubt it. Of course, your likelihood of having long-term effects and getting, getting, uh, giving the virus to someone else, you pose far more risks to yourself and people around you, uh, not being vaccinated than you do by taking the vaccine. So yeah, I, I, um, I'm looking at this article here too, that you sent me, um, studies confirm waning immunity. Yeah. Right. I, so here's the thing about that. So, I mean, here's why so I we know about that. this. We, we know. Right. About okay. This. Good. Yeah, good. And it's it's a, you're not going to dispute CNN, right? You're, you're going to be okay with that, just in general as a source. I mean, do you want to send it to me from somewhere else? You're the one that. No, sent I don't it to know. Me. I'm just asking in a generalized sense because what well, the point I'm trying to make with this actually is that this is not just about the vaccine today, and this is why this is the biggest reason I have a problem with it. And I'll just state it really clearly that this is going to be a autoimmune system by subscription, like fucking Netflix. And this guy, you're gonna have to take a, a booster and a booster and a booster and a booster. If it's so safe and effective, I haven't, how many fucking polio boosters have I had? I don't think I've had one in my whole life. And I went to school so and did everything. So do you think that polio around. is a fair comparison considering that it's a lot different than like a variant of a virus versus like polio? Like these things are kind of different, right? No, they are different. I'm just, I'm just saying that I'm concerned. I'm deeply concerned. I think everyone should be you, me, everyone, my fucking cat should be concerned with a, with a, with a, a policy where you're going to have to take a, an update every six months, and we don't know what this accumulation update process is going to do. Months. I don't know if that was. Yeah, there's I, I would have that to see that. Five, I think. I don't know if it was six months. I thought that the first booster shot would be available in six months. I didn't think that it was every six months you need a booster shot, but I could I be wrong. Either way, annoying. most vaccines over time do lose efficacy. This is just common knowledge. It's the okay. same reason we, hold on, it's the same reason that we get uh, booster shots for our flu vaccines every year because mm -hmm. the virus mutates, it changes. And just to readdress what you were saying also earlier about uh, younger kids, oftentimes what happens with viruses is first, They'll happen and it kind of kills out the older generation and then it does start to spread to younger people and it's not as deadly because it's more successful for the virus to the virus is able to survive better that way. So it actually is makes sense and is almost inevitable with the way the virus works that it is going to start affecting people in my age range, people in your age range and yes, kids also. Perhaps. So getting the vaccine makes, again, perfect sense. I, I so wait, let, let me just let me just peg down what you're trying to say here. I want to make sure I understand. So you're saying that if everybody takes the vaccine, we get almost 100% subscription to this vaccine. That's going to mean that the virus is going to go away. We're going to eliminate the virus from the human species that way. That's what you're saying? I mean, I, I don't know. But I know that if we want to actually achieve herd immunity, we need to get at least like 94% of the population, I think, like double vax. Um, but so yeah, I, I just, herd immunity used to not even involve vaccine. It used to just be most people got sick. They all got over it. And then it went away basically sure but this is Blew a different kind of virus right and this is a pandemic that's actually killing people so it's a little different there they're they're all really killing sure people people always died of the regular flu we're gonna be uh we're gonna be winding this down if you guys want to make a closing statement each we'll start with hunter and then we've got some questions now hunter uh it's the first time you've been on the crucible we thank you for coming we do do things a little bit differently after the closing statement is done we get to the q a both moderators take notes as we go and we often have questions ourselves i have a few that i'm going to ask um and uh yeah so you can you can go ahead and make your closing statement go for it oh i'll let nick go first Oh, uh, really quick, just for everybody in the chat, uh, I'm copying down all your questions right now. Remember to just hit at the crucible in order for me to catch it. That'll help me out. Go ahead, gentlemen. All right. So my closing statement then. Okay. So my closing statement is pretty simple. I do not mind at all if anyone wants to sign up for a test run of something and in in all of the pharmaceutical stuff. If you want to test it, especially if your life's at risk, then you sign up and you go ahead and God bless. I hope you're okay. Right. That's my position. However, if you're going to try to mandate that this cooperation between government and private sector, which, by the way, is the dictionary definition of fascism, even though it's not the correct definition. If you're going to mandate that, now all of a sudden I have a problem because 
organizations, institutions, and bodies that I do not trust that have horrible track records with trust, uh, syphilis, uh, thalidomide, fentanyl is FDA approved, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These things do not mitigate my concerns whatsoever. And what I'm trying to tell you is that I hope that it works out okay because if it doesn't, and if I'm right, it'll be a horror show. And I don't want to witness that. I don't want to witness that to be correct. I think that that's a horrible way to, to have a win a win a debate or whatever. So that's basically my claim. And also the thing about it is too, is that it's just a risk to benefit analysis for most people. If you are in most of the the range of most human beings from like say five, five years old to say 65, you're not really at that much of a risk of COVID is my opinion based on everything I've read and studied. If you are over the age of 65 to 65 to say, say 95, hundred, you're probably at a lot higher risk. The survival rate goes down substantially right? So this is a thing. Also, the more you throw in pre existing conditions, including especially obesity, the more likely you are to die of COVID. So therefore, if you're in those categories, it might actually make sense to be on team hunter and go with that. If you're not if you're healthy, otherwise, then I would say you might want to rethink this whole thing, you might not want to just comply with a government overreach that is completely off the charts and saying, all right, go ahead, Hunter. Yeah, so, uh, Thanks for the discussion, Nick. Truthfully, I do think that you might want to change your name to George Lucas and just write another work of fiction because it seems to be where your head is at. Um, I oh, thought yeah. that I would end this really quickly with uh, an article from Yale News here. U.S. vaccination campaign prevented up to 279,000 COVID-19 deaths. And then also I'd like to reference this one from U.S. News. Uh, again, none of these come from CNN or anything explaining how COVID rates have now decreased significantly due to the vaccination rates increasing. Um, so yeah, everywhere we have seen that the vaccine is overall effective, and even if you have breakthrough infections, you're less likely to go to the hospital, less likely to die. Why wouldn't you want to take a safe, protective measure? It's like wearing a helmet. It's like, well, you could fall and your helmet could twist around and choke you or the likelihood of you falling like it makes more sense to just wear the helmet be safe better safe than sorry right so seriously the data is in we can see the studies at the end of the day hospital rates are skyrocketing for unvaccinated individuals with covid while us vaxxed are swinging by living the good life all right we're safe and sound so, uh, yeah, I, again, I, I don't know. I appreciate the convo, Nick. Thanks, Andrew, for the for the moderation. You too. Well, hang on. Uh, now we can get to the Q&A. You've got a little time left here, Hunter. Oh, I'm not trying to dip. I'm just. Oh, OK. Editing. Gotcha. Gotcha. So the first the first question that I had, uh, this was one that I wrote down, was about asymptomatic carriers. Well, one of the things that had come up in the course of this discussion was you had said, you know, you have to get COVID in order to spread COVID. Well, of course, that's logically true. Uh, there are a lot of asymptomatic carriers, aren't there? Yeah, but you would, if you're asymptomatic, you still have gotten COVID in order to be asymptomatic. No, 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 right, right, I get it. I'm not, I'm not disputing any of that. I'm just saying um, if you're an asymptomatic carrier, you could, you're spreading the virus and you don't even know that you're spreading the virus, yeah? Yes. So if you have, so when you're, when you're talking about uh, the vaccine efficacy, you say, mm -hmm. hey, the vaccine's working really well. Um, you could still be vaccinated and be spreading COVID asymptomatically and not know it, right? Uh, I mean, if you had a breakthrough infection, it's possible, sure. But yeah, I mean, that's, again, like this just kind of goes back to the main point, which is just that no vaccine is 100%, of course. But if we want to reduce the risk of having breakthrough infections and vaccinated people with asymptomatic spread, we need more people to ultimately get vaccinated. We need people to that that way the Delta variant isn't able to keep on uh, proliferating, and that way COVID isn't able to continue to spread throughout people that haven't gotten vaccinated. Gotcha. And then in an R, I had in my notes here too. One of the things that you had opened with, by the way, Hunter, just so you know, uh, in an R came on very short notice to uh, to put this debate together. He he hasn't been as practiced at <laughs> the COVID. Uh, conversation as as you have been, I don't think. Um, no, it's a, it's all right. I, yeah, it's, right. But one of I the know things, I came in a little hot, so it's just it's my okay, style. Man. It's just but, how I am, you know. But one one of the things though that NNR had said was he said, "Hey, um, one of the you know kind of one of the big problems that I have here is that uh, I'm not a scientist. You're not a scientist. So what are we arguing about? Do you think that that goes to Hunter's point though that you should, you know, kind of go with what the experts are saying?" 
Are you asking me? Yeah. Yeah, it was in my notes here. Well, I would say that if you if you lived in a <laughs> I'm kind of going to the hypothetical land here, but if you lived in a society where your experts were not corrupted at all and they could be completely trusted, then I would say solidly yes. Unfortunately, we have seen over and over and over again, including the leaks of Fauci's actual emails, that this these people are not exactly on the up and up. These people have serious serious ethical issues and quite frankly they should have been removed from both administrations and replaced with somebody who is not corrupted by whatever means they are corrupted but i would add also that hunter if they're not paying you to do this man they should pay you to do this you're, you're not getting your fair shake by the uh whoever that is that would do that well it's i study up i study up on this stuff because i do the part of the reason i can't come in kind of hot is because when it comes to misinformation <laughs> regarding this this just this affects me this affects you this affects my personal life so I do tend to have a little bit of animosity towards people kind of like you that lie and appeal to conspiracy and fear monger about the vaccine when it's generally been proven to be safe. I mean, again, we want to that's actually a really good question from uh, from Andrew there that if we want to listen to the experts, even if you don't trust Fauci, that's fine. You don't need to trust Fauci. Go look at the uh, the Yale yeah. News study. Go look yeah. at the go look at the other studies. Go look at the real world data that shows the hospitalization rates among people vaccinated versus people that aren't with so COVID-19. Why are, we, like, why are we neglecting the guy that actually basically was one of the co-inventors of the mRNA process that said, hey, nobody should be yep. taking this. I knew everyone this was ignores come up. Robert Malone. No, I, yeah, I know. I knew that this was going to come up. Thankfully, I did. Okay, a little so bit explain of it to me then because sure. you have some dismissive way to do it. Tell me I'm listening. Yes, I absolutely do. So Robert Malone, there's no denying that he did some research in the 80s that played a role in like developing some uh, information we have on the mRNA vaccine. <laughs> sure. But he did not actually invent the mRNA vaccine. That's a little bit of a stretch. In reality, the feel. no, the creation and the development of the mRNA vaccine was due to the work of a multitude of scientists, researchers, and that's how science works. It is built on of top of built on top of built. So he's not even the like inventor of the mRNA vaccine. Second of all, he can, even if he was the inventor, it doesn't actually mean that he knows like everything about the, the effects of the vaccine. Of not. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes people that are the inventor are not actually the best equipped to deal with how their creation is carried out. A great historical example of this is Robert Oppenheimer. He created sure. the atomic bomb, but the way that it was used, he was really unhappy. Perfect example. So, Perfect example, because he he expressed doubts and he said we shouldn't do it. And what did they do? They fucking went ahead and did it anyway, just because they and could. that killed Same millions story. of people. Where the vaccine has saved hundreds of thousands of lives thus far. Hard so stretch, that's man. really not a very good comparison, there, buddy. But pretty good. Why don't we move? Pretty good no, it's, it's, it's it's bad. It's why bad. don't we move? Well, on we've we've game? still we still got quite a few for you guys. I'm yeah, sorry. let's I, move I, to I the just next question. To those. Let's, 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 yeah, let's I just wanted to get to the last of my series before I pull it over to Pedro. He has all the audience questions. Yeah, this one's for Hunter. It was in my notes too. Do you think that it's reasonable considering how our country's history interfaces with minorities that they would be highly trustful of a, a distrustful of a government vaccine? Um, I understand the historical uh, reasons that some black people might have like distrust towards medical institutions. But ultimately, if I were to have a conversation with that person, I would tell them you're being silly. You're being conspiratorial, mm -hmm. because even if there was historical evidence of discrimination, See? we should talk about that. Absolutely. But there's no evidence that there's any kind of discrimination involved with this vaccine. This is being given to everybody. This is being given to, to white people, black people. Like This isn't. This has nothing to do with race. So I can understand their general distrust of like medical institutions, maybe. But to actually say that, like, I'm not going to get the vaccine because one time the medical institutions were racist, I would I would say that they were being really silly. And then NNR. I would say that their concerns are very legitimate. I mean, the Tuskegee, I forget all of them, but the Tuskegee experiment is the famous one. And uh, I don't know that, the, I don't, I'm not going to claim, I'm not claiming at all. Let's make that clear. I'm not claiming that this is to wipe out black people, okay, or, white well, people was, or anything. Just to just, just correct this one thing, the Tuskegee experiment was not a government experiment is my understanding. Okay. Well, this isn't an experiment at all. That the, the vaccine isn't experimental or anything, so. 
Well, but it was, it was, that's the whole point though. It was made on the fucking emergency use act though. That's the problem. But you so keep we, saying then, that as if it's a bad thing, but we already, is, which means did, it would have been disqualified from doing that had they been honest. From didn't we one. already establish that the like expedition didn't actually cut any corners? I mean, what corners were cut? The corner that they had alternatives that actually worked, which would disqualify it from being used under an emergency use act. Are you talking use about hydroxychloroquine or whatever? Hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, vitamin D. This has been studied so heavily, stuff. dude, and it's been demonstrated. Yeah, except not for to like Japan effective. and fucking uh, and India and several other and places they, where they've done it on At first, yes, scale. they thought. May, at first, they thought maybe this was working, and then it didn't. So they stopped. They had that in their guidelines originally. They don't anymore. Here's something for you. I'll read this to you really quick. From uh, the Cochrane Review, cannot confirm whether ivermectin compared with placebo or usual care leads to more or fewer deaths after one month. Whether it improves or worsens patients' condition, increases or decreases unwanted side effects, nor whether it increases or re uh, reduces negative COVID-19 tests. So this has been studied. This has been heavily done. This is a full-out review here. It doesn't really do anything. It doesn't necessarily it like make them appeal worse. appeal to authority, man. It's, you're just appealing you to authority. You said you want to listen to the really... experts. <laughs> I'm giving you the experts here, no, dude. I'm, just, I'm not I'm an expert on you. this. I'm just... No, don't back up. You you know that what you said was dumb, so you're trying to back up. But I'm, I, don't, I don't think it was dumb. I think that we don't know what the hell's going on here completely, and we can't. You, you, you know, it's don't matter know. The thing is, is you don't no, know. Every, you don't know in, either, No, you're sorry, out here in La La... No, you're out here in La La Land... I don't know oh, what the so fuck is going reality, on, and that's all of a, a sudden, break, man. no, and that's your reason for not getting this vaccine, and then you're applying this to everyone else. Some of us are not paid, some of us actually just genuinely give a fuck about this shit, like me, and are interested in doing the research, and it turns out when you do know, there's no reason okay. to actually be skeptical right. here. Let's go into that. So, Hunter, I mean, what, what's, what, what's your, what's your degree? And I mean, did you go to school do for science? Do I need science? a degree to do research? I didn't yeah, know you that. Actually I'm sorry. Do, you actually you actually kind of do, man. Because you're, no, no, you're trying to establish that you're having these authority based on this hard science. I didn't say science I have the authority. I said that I have the... You need to go get a master's degree, or at least, or maybe a PhD, to really be an authority on this stuff. If that's what you want to do, you would be good at it. But you have to fucking do that first. There's an order of operations to this shit. You can't Wait, just go you and declare yourself a you realize Google you're making PhD. yourself look really bad right now, right? Because okay. you don't actually need any of those things. I, believe me, I'm not smart enough at all to get any of those degrees. But turns out you don't actually need it because, like, you can just look it up. Like, I don't need a master's degree to read, for example, from sciencenews.org showing okay. how these sh charts show that COVID-19 vaccines are doing their job comparing the hospitalization rates. By the way, showing oh. them skyrocketing in July among unvaccinated people with COVID. You so do I don't need a, let's say that you wanted to... Let's say that I don't you need a master's to degree in, to read this. I'm not saying you have to have a master's degree to read it. I'm saying that you have to have a master's degree or a, a PhD to go out and make policy and convince policymakers that you understand how to an analyze scientifically this... Am I making policy? What? Am I, make, did, am I in front of Congress right now? Congressman no, I, Nick? What, what's going on? You're trying to be a policy convincer. You're trying to go out and convince the public to do this or do that. And in your case, going for it, you're saying you're convincing everybody to take this vaccine, and that's your position. And you're going to try to convince everybody that you've done such a good analysis that you're certain it's safe. You're certain so that it actually, won't be harmful no, to everybody. No, that would actually be an appeal to authority. So, like, for example, citing Robert <laughs> Malone earlier, that arguably was actually an appeal to authority. My point for was me, that example, he's also to be, an expert. I know, exactly. For me to be like, well, I have a degree in this thing, so therefore I have the authority now to listen to me? No, that would actually be an appeal to authority because who says I have the authority in every aspect in order to have that conversation? I don't. I'm admitting on stream that I don't have a degree. I'm not a doctor. But again, this is why it makes you look bad is because you don't need to be any of those things in order to just type it in on Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever the fuck you use and just look at the charts, read about it. Like it's not hard. You don't I need look a bad, degree. Guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but that's just, it's really silly. You know, just try to do that. Try to go and get us go funding for your study based on your your personal autodidactic studies of Google no, and DuckDuckGo. I don't need to See do that. that is this how you. desperate you are? Are you so I'm mad right now so about this, how this dude, discussion okay. went? Hey, 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 guys, Hunter, let me butt in really quick. I just no, wanted to show you questions. something. I kind of wanted to uh, get a question in here. I wanted you, I wanted you to watch something. I'm going to ask you something. Really. Okay. All right. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't this happen in Australia? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to watch anymore because it probably gets too violent. So my question is, 
I'm more on the mandate side. I really respected what you said when you said, uh, you know, you don't want to be too offensive to people, hurting people and stuff. How mo- how willing are you? How far are you to go to enforce uh, vaccination mandates? Well, no, I, I think that, yeah, any kind of like police brutality. Um, I'm I'm a very big proponent of being against that. I guess that's kind of contradictory sounding, isn't it? I'm against awesome. police brutality. I'm against police brutality. Uh, absolutely. So that clip you showed Hang me, if, if people aren't wearing their masks and they're being like brutalized by police, then no, I no, that say- wasn't brutal. That wasn't just brutalized. That was a husband and his, uh, having his wife ripped from his arms over a mask. Yeah, then so. that would be fucked up. Then I would say that's fucked up. But Perfect. Uh, no, yeah, you. so I, I don't I, I don't need to be like in favor of like the worst aspects of these mandates in order to recognize that like generally speaking the vaccine is safe and people should get vaccinated. That also was I'm pretty sure was on mask mandates, right? So we didn't really get into that as much on the on Oh, the well, imagine how it, how bad it would be for vaccination mandates if you got caught walking outside well, you without your passport. That, I, you're, I you're, you're perfectly correct. See, I don't give a damn actually about any of this whole science bull crap. It's going to mm-hmm. come down to the point where if you show up and you're trying to take my wife from my arms over some kind of a uh, weird thing like this, we might have a problem. Sure. So and that's it's also where, that's what we really want to talk about. So how far are you willing to go? So you said not that, which I'm proud of. Yeah. Tell me how far you want to go, though. I mean, I think that if states enact some kind of a vaccine mandate, I don't really see an overall problem with that, considering the court precedent exists. Um, There are different ways we can go about it, but I don't think that we need to engage again in like police brutality. There are ways to incentivize people, for example. So after you get the vaccine, it's very likely that you have like kind of uncomfortable symptoms the next day. That's very common. Mm -hmm. I think that there should be a government thing that steps in that makes it so that companies uh, have to give you some form of like paid time off after you get the vaccine. So you have to get the vaccine and then you have three days off after that to deal with, cause you know, especially after the second dose, you feel kind of shitty for the next day. Right. So Hunter, that right there, I think is a good way that we let me ask you something. That. You understand that in order to enforce these ma- vaccine mandates or any of these laws, you have to use force. All laws are enforced by at least the potential of force. As Chairman Mao said, all power comes out of the end of a barrel of a gun. So I mean, if you're not willing to force people with a fucking gun in their back to do what you're willing to do, then your law is just a piece of fucking paper, is man. Is this how and you that's feel about people that are, what about – how do you feel about like public displays of nudity? How is that relevant to this? Do you think that if someone's walking down the street naked that like it's bad that they – like are you against that? Or do you think there should be a literal gun to their head because that's illegal, you know? You can't do that. Well, I no, think you're I just making kind of a. I think you're just. Uh, That's making, not a false uh, equivalence. It's not. It's, it's not, not really. So you can have state okay. enacted violence the way that you're using this against you if you're not wearing clothes in public. Yes, public indecency. Cool. Yes, it's against the law. But the problem is, is that any law, all laws, including like fucking speeding tickets, you have to be capable of enforcing them with violence. It doesn't mean Not it's always this, done that way. It doesn't always have to be violence, but there has to be a consequence involved. Sure. So, for example, first, we would have to see what are these mandates actually looking like? Uh, I'm not actually sure any state vaccine mandates have gone in place, although the precedents there. Usually what we tend to see here are private companies that are mandating vaccines, which we don't even need to get into that. I'm sure we can both concede that's obviously within their right. So you would kind of have to show me like where your freedoms ultimately being taken away. You're not going to be down on the boardwalk getting arrested because you don't have your fucking vaccine passport. Like it's usually like, hey, if you enter Walmart, we want to see your passport or hey, if you're working here, you can't put your other coworkers at risk. You need to get vaccinated. Like it's you're really good at sugarcoating things, Hunter. I'll tell you that much, man. But you know, the problem is, is it's not sugarcoated. Do- it's just pulling being you out denied of service tier. in New York City. They're being denied service at restaurants in New York City. You're yes, okay with private that? Businesses, you're okay? private segregation, businesses. Segregation. Private. <laughs> oh, and now you're Do you now, think sorry, that there's. Wait, do you think that. Hold on, question. Do you right? think there's segregation when you go to McDonald's and old people, uh, like grown people, aren't allowed into the kids' section? Like the play place? How is that a good comparison? Is that segregation? There are forms of segregation in society if you want to get down into the nitty gritty. But you're not being segregated on the basis of some immutable characteristic here. You're being kept away from people because you're dangerous because you're obviously too delusional to get the vaccine. So clearly, Mm. yes, I'm fine with there being private businesses putting measures in place where they say if you're going to go here, especially if you're going to work here – you have to be 
vaccinated. Now, keep in mind, by the way, that now what we've gone from is how do you feel about the state holding a gun to your fucking head to, well, businesses are segregating. They're putting some people who aren't vaxxed over here on the other dark table. Like, do you so notice cool. how well, quick it's like backs down and like, huh? You know why they're doing that, right? You, you understand why they're doing it to evade the constitution, to circumvent the constitution. That's why they're doing that. Private you understand businesses? that, right? I thought private businesses have a constitutional right to like freedom of association to a degree. As long as it's not a yeah. class, they're able so, to. Okay. But so if they're going to be able to deny people service over this, why aren't they allowed to deny people service or other characteristics? Even, even, I mean, it's just the thing is, where do you draw the because line? How is that a characteristic? Not getting vaccinated isn't a characteristic. It kind of is, though, because no, a lot not. of people don't think that it's necessary. A lot of people think it's a violation of their natural rights. Well, those people can and, think what they want, then they're stupid. Like, we yeah, demonstrated that clearly. Like, you, you clearly You're think this throughout, throughout this when conversation. I'm psychiatry you, credentials. Done... you have none. That's interesting. I like that. Oh, you have credentials? Yeah, I do. I have a science degree. That's not. That's neither here nor there. The problem is, is you're trying to call people delusional, which, by the way, is a medical diagnosis. When you're, you're just people that disagree with you. Or I am informally medically diagnosing these people is delusional, unless they have a literal doctor that said, like, "Hey, don't take the vaccine. You're on blood thinners. Here's a good reason why." Yada yada. I understand that completely. If you're immune compromised, can't get the vaccine. Totally understandable. Other than that. You have to give me a convincing reason why you don't want to get vaccinated and why sure. your reason justifies putting the whole of society at greater risk. And it can't just is, be, not that well, serious, we don't know period. what might happen in the future because I saw a scary Facebook meme. Whether or not I, like me or anyone else has a pre-existing condition is nobody's fucking business. It's called the HIPAA laws. It's not your business, not Joe Biden's you business. You don't want to say that. I'm going to ask you to please walk that back before we get walk into what? that. Back. You, you know that asking person. someone whether or not they're vaccinated is not a violation of HIPAA, right? It is. Of course it is. No, it's not. Asking no, no, someone no, no, to... Wait, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, I, that's not what I meant. I meant that if it's, you're asking them if they have a pre-existing condition, that, that that asking them the reality or not of the pre-existing condition is the violation of HIPAA law. It is a real violation of HIPAA law. And if, if you were, they uh, willingly uh, give uh, it up. No, not if the individual... If you're an employer, so for you example, could be sued for that, you know. So, like, no, very seriously. you wouldn't. The employer is able to enact vaccine mandates. So, for example, yes, you're going to have to fill out something and give a decent... This is just logically follows. You have to give a logical and, and decent explanation as to why you think that you are special enough to be exempt from this thing. And if you have underlying conditions oh, and you you are consensually and willingly disclosing, hey, I'm on blood thinners. That's why I'm exempt. Then, yes, that's not a violation of HIPAA. They're consensually yeah. doing it. HIPAA, by the way, is – do you want me to explain what HIPAA is? Because I, I know exactly be... what HIPAA is, probably way more really? than you do. Because you probably thing. didn't when, if you knew what it you're, meant. You you're not obligated that. to explain this to strangers in public. You're not expected what to play strangers place. strangers are asking for this? Walmart. What, you, what strangers are asking? If you go in Walmart and they ask you why you don't have a fucking ID in a, for, a, for a, a vaccine and you say, I don't have it because – now you have to explain your medical reality to no, some you stranger would probably be a, No, that's not true. You'd probably – Please just say I, I have a medical exemption. Maybe yeah, you have a doctor's note. I'm not match. actually sure that works work. because usually didn't work. Because what's up, Andrew? What's up, Andrew? We've got to move on to these other questions, yeah, sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah, I just I really quick just want to set the record. Very happy. Yeah. You can respond, Hunter. You can respond. Okay, I'll Go just ahead. respond really quick to explain what HIPAA is. So HIPAA protects your privacy from um like doctors, right? So for example, if you sit down with a therapist and you say hey, I'm having really suicidal thoughts. And then yes. the therapist calls up your friend and says, hey, guess what this dude just told me? That's a violation of HIPAA. If you yourself consensually sit down with your friend and say, I've been having really bad thoughts, that's not a violation of HIPAA. You're consensually no, you're getting right. that information up. You're right. You're right. I'm just saying that if you were, I'm saying that if some person at Walmart is coming up and I'm not willingly explaining to them why, why I'm exempt. Changing? Well, I thought it was you're... employers first. You okay, said they right, could well, be sued for that. Let's, let's stick with employers. If the employer is asking me why I'm exempt from taking their forced vaccine, I have to explain to them my medical private information about what makes me exempt. Yes. That's the violation. It's forced. Yes. The forcing is what That's makes it not a problem. Forced. You could, you don't have to give them that information. You don't need to work okay. there. You also, by talking, the so, way, you re okay, hold so on just, really quickly. Right. Can I just go tell ahead, you? Can I, can I let you know something really quickly? If you were in an instance like that, that would be a violation of HIPAA, right? You realize that your medical information given to an employer is protected under HIPAA. Yes, of course. So it's not a HIPAA, it would be a HIPAA violation if you told your employer that, hey, 
I'm here's my medical exemption. All right. The doctor said I'm on blood thinners and I'm at risk and I cannot take the vaccine. Here's my medical exemption. He could say, OK, that's a fair exemption. Get back to work now. And then if your boss stepped out and said, hey, everybody, this dude is on blood thinners, LOL, that would be a violation of HIPAA. It's not a violation no, of HIPAA, no. again, for you to give your own medical information. You're right. If you're pursuing an exemption. You you're are right. Pursuing you're it. right. But you don't you don't see the issue here is really that you're turning all of these people who don't have any medical training at all into these medical judges that get to decide whether or not it's OK, or whether or not it passes. You're, you're making you're bestowing that power upon them. And we already saw this with the mask mandates. It was a fucking nightmare. These idiots don't know what they're doing. None of them do. The people at Walmart know nothing about medicine, of course. So when they go, you have to wear the mask. You say, no, I have the- asthma. They say, fuck you, wear the mask. I, I experienced it myself. Okay. I don't know. My bag, my guy, the guy who bags my groceries, he's pretty smart. I'd actually trust him with my medical history. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we're not asking you to Hunter. give your medical history to any random strangers or anything. No, I don't know why the like random people at Walmart keep coming up. If we're talking about an employer and you need to pursue an exemption in that manner, then again, you're able to disclose your medical information usually to your employer, especially considering if you're employed, your health care is tied to your employment. It only makes sense Hunter. again. Like they're covered you're under the one HIPAA. That said- you're the one that said that a necessary, legitimate medical exemption is what's necessary to get the exemption. So you, you need a medical reason. So in order to pro- get that reason, to get the exemption, you need to provide that private data. That's my whole point. I, that's, you can it's not, consent. You get that, right? All right, all right, all right. I got to cut it. We got to get the questions, guys. On. I'm going to put the first one up, and it is from Based Homeschool Mom. It reads, uh, does Hunter support restricting caloric intake for the morbidity obese, morbidly obese, since they constitute the vast majority of hospitalized COVID patients. I love this one. This is one of my favorite, my favorites where it's like, let's blame the fat people. There's also people with uh, asthma, people with diabetes who aren't fat that are also at higher risks as well. So no, I don't think that restricting fat people's calories would actually go to reducing COVID rates where again, getting vaccinated absolutely would. You want to chime in on that, Inanar? But you understand why she's asking that, right? Because you're forcing medical lifestyle decisions on them to mitigate a very real risk. Same, not, thing the, same thing with the same thing with the shot. You're you're forcing the shot on them because you believe that they have a very real risk and they may, but you don't get to force that, just like you don't get to force them a denial of food because they're fat. It's just it's the same it's the same logical assessment no, of the not. ethics. You're in one it area. Is. No, it, it, it's really not. Explain to me how it's not. Because depriving someone of food is like <laughs> a different thing than advocating that your worker, your employee is vaccinated. Do you realize that like she should just thin them down a little. So for example, there's like actual precedent and laws that allow companies to mandate vaccines. They're allowed to do this. Even Joe Biden's mandate, although I have acknowledged that it is a bit in a legal gray area. So we're going to have to see how that plays out, even though with Joe Biden's mandate, OSHA has the precedent and has the right to mandate vaccines under workplace safety. They do. Under workplace safety. They're going to claim that, but they really don't, actually. But anyway, here's the thing. That could be okay. What you're saying could be okay. I don't believe you. If the the employer is now on the hook for all of your medical costs (laughs) as a result of that for the rest of your life, which could be in the millions, you think they're going to sign on to that? Because that is very real. That could happen. I'm sorry. I missed that. What, What was that? So the, if this could be okay, if your medical employer who's forcing you to get the shot, you take it or you get fired, they're forcing you. That would be okay if, maybe if they are taking on the liability and cost of all of the medical procedures you're going to need for the rest of your life if something goes wrong. Is that they, okay with you? You're, you're on they, board with that? They do, right? Because usually your mm, employment really. is tied to your health care. So and what if you get I fired? They then, they're, then, they're not, then, they're, then you are it's all on you now. you got a lot of health care. Well, you you. well, if you were got well, do you have a problem with healthcare? Do you want to talk? If you get fired, then yeah, then the the company probably wouldn't have to be liable for you having negative effects from the vaccine. But they forced you, you to take. take it. You didn't want it. You, they were forced. That's the coercion is the problem. Some the coercion people, is the crux of this. Dude, please, can we? Oh God, there's coercion in every aspect of life. In order for society to function, yes. there's a level of coercion. You're coerced to wear a shirt every time you. But, walk but in a Hunter, I think what he's getting, I think what he's getting at, Hunter, is does this coercion come to the point of a beanbag gun being shot at my face? Like no. 
you're able okay, to, perfect. again, you can pursue an exemption. So even under Joe Biden's thing, they're setting up a whole process in order to deal with exemptions. OK, we've even seen exemptions uh, uh, like rates of exemption requests rise like people are able to request exemptions. But that doesn't always mean that they're going to qualify for those exemptions. And again, when you are working for an employer, you have agreed to certain guidelines. For example, being fired for not taking the vaccine would be similar to being fired for refusing to go to like a required sexual harassment seminar where they're like, hey, False every, equivalency. not at all. Nope. The, the, they are within their right to mandate that you do certain things in regards to workplace safety. Absolutely. Yes. And for so, certain jobs, okay, like, like so, okay, so good, let's give a good example that's very solid and very real. There was a lot of nurses in New York City who chose to quit rather than be forced to take the shot. You never ask yourself why that is, why a bunch of people who went through medical training, unlike both of us completely, why would they want to quit? Why did what they read scare them into not doing it, even at the cost of know. losing Just their job? Someone's a nurse doesn't mean that they're like a virologist or an expert in vaccines. Like, that, that, Super I, I don't know. Authority. They're... They're, okay. Why Why did they quit? Why didn't they want to get the vaccine? Well, let's talk about it. What were the reasons? Were they like, I'm Some seriously on so. blood thinners. I, I just, I can't get, I, I, please, I'm begging you, please. I need a break. And they're like, no, fuck you. Get fired. You're talking about this exemption process they're setting up. And I think that will work about as good as the DMV works. It'll be just like that. It'll be very, very efficient, won't it? It'll be about as it's good as the DMV. It's not about being efficient. It's about making sure there's actually a process there to begin with. So, like, the DMV yeah. isn't, an, isn't efficient at all, but, like, it's probably a good thing that we still have an institution and agency that can manage, like, licenses and registration and, and thus far. So that's a false so You don't think that'll be a problem when you go through it? I mean, you won't, I guess, because you decide to go What are we even arguing about anymore? Yeah, we've it's got to like, yeah, yeah, move, move, move on. Yeah, yeah, move yeah, on. Yeah, all right, let's move on. If he wants to hey, Nick, if you want to come on for 20 questions next, then I'd be happy for it with it if you want. That's fine. I'll come back and we'll keep going if you want. If you got the energy, I got the energy. Okay, so next let's question. Let's question, from, though. Yeah. One question from Fleet Admiral Cap. Um, what does Hunter say about all the information that has been exposed by Project Veritas? I, know this I would have to know what their what significant <laughs> information has been exposed by Project Veritas. First of all, it's funny that we're going to talk about trusting the experts or whatever when James O'Keefe has literally paid himself hundreds of that he himself has paid hundreds of thousands of dollars in lawsuits regarding his deceptive editing and uh deceptive he's tactics. won every yes. one of those by the way so, no he i just told you he paid hundred thousand dollars in a lawsuit i think it was in 2011 go ahead and look it up yeah no i i saw your video i watched your video it was because he recorded against the against the two-party recording law of the state, which is that's probably really exactly what happened. But otherwise than that, you got that one thing. So but otherwise, he's I'm been not sued many that times and always won. So. Hold on. I'm not saying that's the only thing. I would recognize that if I were like, well, he's been deceptive in the past, therefore bad. No, that would be a really lame argument. It's not just that, though. It just kind of shows the hypocrisy a little bit. But also, what is the information that has been exposed? The natural immunity thing? What was what was, what was was unique about that? They, ex they exposed the fact that we have natural No, immunity. what they exposed was that uh, some of the uh, people who were supposed to be submitting certain uh, data, I'm not going to say verbatim, but short summary, things that were supposed to be reported after results of the vaccine upon administration to the patient were not reported. I thought that that was a different video. I thought that was the first one where it's they been five so far that i mean people are aren't they saying that like like this dude just sent me a report on bears to say that it's like skyrocketing like there there might be some uh again there could very well be discrepancies and issues in reporting here and there but i don't think there's anything really conspiratorial about that and as far as the the recent videos that came out it was uh that well i'll try to summarize it quickly it was a random nurse saying the vaccine was full of shit I don't know why we should trust her over the plethora of data internationally indicating that this vaccine is effective in preventing death and hospitalization for COVID. Two, the second one was exposing natural immunity, which we already knew. Natural immunity, yes, sometimes happens, although over a third of people that get COVID do not go on to develop any antibodies at all, and natural immunity wanes far quicker than the vaccine does. So that doesn't really make sense. Don't know why they wasted their time exposing that. And I've lastly, read the inverse. And their okay. last one. And their, uh, oh, the, sorry. Go for it. I was just going to say sorry. the last thing they did was like the fetal cell line thing. Like 
we all know that in order to develop vaccines, they use fetal cell lines, but that's not using aborted fetuses in order to that. That's those are using cell lines that have been regrown in labs f that originated True. from an abortion back in the 60s that was done consensually and was not even done for any kind of scientific or experimental reason. But so you understand that, why that's a religious thing for people anyway, just why because there was be? still an abortion at the root of the process, where if, if you're against abortion, There's, you're still going to be against it just because of that one abortion. That doesn't really hold up, considering even the Vatican has said that it's it's fine to get the COVID vaccine. They support the vaccine, actually. They say, go out, get the vaccine. It's so far removed. It wasn't like, in order to get this vaccine, I am making a demand for abortion. It's that at one time in the 60s, there was a consensual abortion that took place. And from that aborted fetus, they used certain cells that then were regrown over decades that are now used for research in a lab that aren't even in the actual vaccine. It's just in the research process. If you're going to tell me that that God is against it, then yes, uh, no, then I would say God can go fuck himself. <laughs> Oh, well, well, chill out uh, on this channel. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, yeah. what I, I would say, take it up with God. If if why does God say put your life at risk? No, I'm not making that God. argument, but I'm just saying you can see why that would be an issue for some people. That's all I'm saying. I'm not making that argument. He's just, just telling us not to water. shoot dead baby juice in our veins. That's all. It's it's very simple. It's not dead baby juice. Did you just hear what I said? That it doesn't come from. It's not actually like dead baby juice in the vaccine at all. It goes in simply for the research. I'll read you this little segment really quickly. Hold on. Um, <clears throat> uh, so fetal cell lines are cells that grow in a laboratory. They descend from cells taken from abortions in the 70s and the 80s. Okay, so I said 60s, my bad. There we go. So we have an abortion present. We're good. Nice. It's Those dead baby juice. Okay. Right? Is No. Those individual cells have since multiplied into many new cells over the past four decades, creating the fetal cell lines. Current fetal cell lines are thousands of generations removed from the original fetal tissue. They do not contain any tissue from a fetus. Vaccine makers may use these fetal cell, uh, cell lines during the following two phases, research and development, production and manufacturing. So... There's not dead baby juice being shot into your veins. No. No, there's not an actual aborted cell in the shot that you take. <laughs> Correct. Is so, that going to be? Is that going to be a meme, dude? Dead baby juice. Dead baby juice. I, it's I you it's know, I like when I was young, I used to tell dead baby jokes because I thought they were funny. We can. They, they are. They were funny. funny. They were funny. <laughs> you see, it, Hunter, Hunter, I still you're remember an anomaly to me because you come from the Call of Duty chat room days. I remember, I know you do. So it's always weird to hear you go I don't. really saw it. I don't actually. You weren't I, in the I, chat. So you weren't in the chat room with the Xbox. No, I wasn't 360 allowed to play that out. shit. I was Christian. I was too Christian for that. Okay. Okay. There would have been we too got, many bad we got, we got some more. Let's move on, Pedro. Yeah, <laughs> the notorious destiny upbringing, huh? What does Hunter think of uh, doctors, you know? Oh, wait. What does Hunter think of the doctors, you know, experts who speak again? <laughs> against the vaccine since they are, since they're against it does their opinion not matter exactly so yeah i knew that nick was going to agree with this even though we've kind of already debunked this so it's a question for okay yeah so it's, it's a fair question that's fine so there can absolutely be experts that have opposing opinion first of all the majority of experts there's largely a broad consensus both internationally and in the scientific community that this vaccine is safe so most doctors do agree some experts however yes they may disagree with that and they're completely within their right to speak against it but to say that because they're a doctor they're right that would be a uh appeal to authority and it ultimately would be really silly so instead i would say okay maybe they have valid criticisms is that borne out anywhere else is the vaccine really not safe then why are the hospitalization rates for people with covid among the unvaccinated and not with the vaccinated why are literal red states having more outbreaks where they're not getting vaccinated as opposed to blue states like why is this happening like it's not just about one expert saying hello the vaccine is safe and then i'm like oh well it's safe then it's that this like i've Obviously, I feel I've proven this in the last two hours that there's like a good, decent amount of research that's gone into this that explains all this. Like, it's not just one doctor saying something. It's the overall data that we have. So, no, I would I would say that their opinion certainly matters, but it doesn't trump the actual evidence that's contrary to their simple opinion. Gotcha. Sorry, I ran. And 
No, no, you're good. No, you're good. Uh, next question from uh, Movie Blocks uh, for Nick. Is there any evidence that if shown, he would accept? Or is there any information that he wouldn't just not buy? Yeah, sure, absolutely. I mean, there. I think like anyone, you have to go through the evidence as it's presented. You have to look at the methodology they went through. You have to look at the sample size. You have to look at the time scale in which it was assessed. You have to do this. I mean, this basic sort of science review stuff. And if you go to get a bachelor's degree, you learn science review. It's, it's just part of it. You learn to read scientific papers. And I think if you look at it and you go over it, what you want to do is you want to get a large amount of those and you want to do sort of a meta analysis. That's, I guess, what Hunter's doing here. And you want to try to figure out what the consensus of all those different instances say. And then you then to get a, a aggregate understanding. That's what I would, I would advise. Your opinion will be your opinion. Everyone's opinion, will, they'll choose what they believe they want to do. And that makes sense. But I think what you, everyone should do is you should make an aggregate analysis based on all the information you can get. And if, if Hunter chooses to do it, God bless. Hope it works out. That's all I can say, right? I'm not going to try to control that guy's life. If he wants to do that, all right, good luck. I just, I'm saying everyone should choose. And I think it's a fairly, fairly liberal position, actually, for a relatively uh, conservative guy. So there you go. I guess I hope that's a good answer. Did you want to interact with that, Hunter? Um, in like five more seconds, if night, if Nick wants to talk for a little shorter, I'm just reading something really quickly. Oh, okay, sure. I mean, th I mean, that's the thing for a lot of controversy. I'll I'll give that. And so for a lot of these controversial subjects, anything that's a real big controversy, anything that stirs people's emotions up and can get these drag them out blood sports fights like this, that's in my opinion the best way to analyze and form an opinion on it is to try to get all this stuff you can and get an <clears throat> aggregate understanding because then you you tend to average out all of what's suggested in the entire block of information you've gathered, right? I think that's the most level-headed way you can approach it. It doesn't mean, of course, that you'll always be right, but, you know, you're a human being. You won't always get it right. But you try your best, and you, usually you'll be close enough most of the time. All right, so All right, I have here ahead. from PubMed, uh, Efficacy and Safety of COVID-19 Vaccines, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Randomized Clinical Trials. And this is the last little summary here. Um, the mRNA... Uh, vaccines for COVID showed the highest efficacy after first and second doses, respectively. Remarkably, few experienced extreme adverse effects and all stimulated robust immune responses. Okay. So this is a meta-analysis if you're interested. Sure. I'll go ahead and put it down in here for you. Yeah, please do. So maybe that can change your mind for you. Gotcha. Okay. That, uh, the linchpin tends to be that those few people, like, I'll give, I'll just concede to that because I don't, I can't pick it apart and maybe it's right or wrong. I don't, I'll assume that it's correct for the sake of argument. If you have this small portion of these people, let's say it's 4%, 5%, those people that do have this problem, this is going to be a very life changing issue, whatever it's going to be. Like one obvious example, like we've already given, is the myocarditis. There's other ones. So autoimmune stuff, potentially cancer stuff. We don't know yet. It's too soon to know. You can't say when, that then. Not I, I'm not fair. saying it. I'm saying it, but I'm saying potentially. I'm, I'm putting a caveat potentially on it Potentially cancerous sure. sounds pretty fucking scary. I don't well, think that's Well, I mean, that's that the that's thing. Fair. The whole problem is There's that we don't no know. There's been no evidence at all connecting it to cancer. What, like, where are you going? I won't go there. I'd say that we. there's no evidence to conclusively say that it's going to cause you cancer. I will, I will say that. That is true. But okay. once you start changing genetics, whatever means that happens, now you're fucking with something that you probably shouldn't fuck with. That's basically my opinion in a nutshell. Good thing we're not changing genetics then, but... Well. All right, let's move on to the next question. Okay. All right, gentlemen, next question. It is from Fully Adderall Cap again, a follow-up to that. What does Hunter think about the fact that in Italy, if you don't have a double dose of the uh, by the 15th of October or tests every 72 hours, you are forced to work with no pay, and if you refuse to lose your job, this is for and all And if you positions. refuse, you lose your job. This yeah. is all oh. for all positions and all companies, even if it's just one person. Yep. Um, again, like we can acknowledge that the vaccine is completely safe, effective, beneficial, and should be absolutely given to like everyone possible while also recognizing that like some of these mandates may be a little bit extreme. But if you talk about it, there are a lot of choices here involved. First of all, you have a choice to get the safe and effective vaccine, which it, to my understanding, I don't know what it's like in Italy, but at least over here, it's free and easy to get. So that's the first option you have there or test every 72 hours. That's also completely fine. If you're going to refuse to get the vaccine because you're too scared, then you should probably be tested for the virus every 70, 72 hours. And if you're going to refuse to that, 
then yeah, you're literally just putting people at risk. So the work with no pay thing is meant is put in there to sound scary. No one would actually work with no pay. People would just say, fuck that. No, I'm not doing it. And then they'd be fired. That's what would happen. So it, it might be a little bit strict in some aspects, but like it would kind of have to go back to like, why don't you just get the vaccine then? So that Hunter, just on the moral level, you don't you're not bothered by that level of coercion. You can say, oh, there's more coercion than other things in life, but this is a unique thing. You're not no, bothered by that. A, there's morally. the same amount of coercion, even in like going to public school, for example. Kids are required to be vaccinated in order to even go to public school. That is the that is absolutely but those are established. The They're not the same thing, man. It's, there's no experimentalness at all, really. To oh the, my to god! The so it's just ones. about the mRNA thing, even though it's been yes, human it tested trial since precisely. 2013. We've studied long-term effects I don't, of it. I don't, I don't know, man. I know, I know. You don't buy it. You don't buy it. You don't buy it. I no, I, I don't buy that. The studies since 2013 are comprehensive enough to dismiss the idea that there may be any serious complications. In fact, what I, from what I've read, a lot of these early animal, tr animal trials on using mRNA vaccines were very devastating, and they basically killed off the whole populations. I don't, I don't so know if that, could that have been early in trial? on an experiment. There are probably early experiments where there have been like yeah. the first animal trials didn't go so well. That's probably the first like part of it. But when we're Usually talking about the COVID-19, the no, this is how we Usually. do things. Did no, no. But when it comes to the mRNA vaccine, like we've had animal trials, we've had human trials, we've tested this repeatedly. And with the COVID-19 mRNA vaccine, keep in mind, COVID vaccine in general has been being researched and developed, studied, sent for like 50 years or more. And then, um, it just kind of all came together here for a perfect storm. We have the mRNA vaccine that came together. We have the uh, all coincidence, man. It's it, it all came together it's at a perfect amazing. storm. Yeah, it's a miracle. All man. right, next question, and go I can go now because I, I got my glasses. There's no, glasses. There's no coincidences okay. in this guy's head. That's one of the problems that I'm starting to notice. Not amongst human interactions. I think everything. Have you ever thought that like maybe the elites are like controlling everything? Are the elites in the so, movie right you, now? Nick? I mean, just, well, I mean, just you know, to just very like grounded. Be fair, I, I've, I've, I've thought that maybe the elites are controlling things. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, Hunter. Yes. Welcome <laughs> to the cabal, Hunter. Welcome yeah, to the right. resistance, brother. <laughs> this is the thing. I see people. It's funny because yeah, people are like, him. I did come in here a little hot. People are like, Hunter, you came in hot. I'm like, dude, I'm going on the crucible. Yeah. What is called the crucible? Exactly. We're trying to keep the sand wet, ladies and gentlemen. So <laughs> he did exactly what he was supposed to do. Uh, next question: If you're on the vaccine and you need regular boosters, what to stop? What to stop this becoming the norm of every new variant as COVID slash flus mutate constantly? Well, I mean, even if that w did become the norm and you needed a booster every year, or every other year, then that wouldn't really be that strange. Considering again, we do the same exact thing with flus. We already are kind of used to this. This makes sense again, but. Also, by everybody getting vaccinated now, it actually lowers the likelihood of COVID successfully mutating and then breeding and then becoming worse and worse. So if everybody actually gets their shit together, gets vaccinated now, then we can actually reduce the likelihood of needing more boosters because that only reduce um, increases the likelihood of more variants occurring and then obviously the need for a booster. Makes no sense, man. It sounds like you. Th it sounds like what you think is if everyone goes along with it, me, every other person doesn't want. If we all go along with it, then this whole thing will go away. And I, I'm telling that's you right why, now, I think never happen. I think that's why it's called herd immunity because they want us all like herded herd up like sheep. Okay. They want us they all herded up like sheep to the slaughter. Like Dude, I think that, no, they're hurting <laughs> us. They're herding us up to like sheep to the slaughter. That's what's going <laughs> on. Here. That's why it's called right. herd immunity. <laughs> okay. You have to get a tetanus shot every couple years too. Yeah, I mean, there's. You have to get boosters usually with medication. That's kind of how it works. Yeah, I'm glad this right. came up. Israel was a big was a big one I wanted to bring up. Oh, I'm they glad have, okay. everybody's vaccinated, and then all of a sudden, you know, through the roof. What? I explain it. I'm interested in here. Sure. Oh, I would be more than happy to talk about. Well, this really show. quick because I like saying this. Rachel for the patriarchy say actually sent in this question. It's always always an awesome name. What do guests think of reporting from Israel, which has the highest vaccination rates, but also one of the highest new case rates? Sure. So there's a really interesting article that kind of explains why this is occurring and um, like what to do about it. So the main thing, again, I know it kind of sounds like a broken record when I keep bringing up the Delta variant, but the reason I'm saying it is because it's literally just the answer, right? So 
I have to keep on saying it. The reason is, is that, first of all, they took the vaccine at an earlier time. We know roughly after like six months, the efficacy starts to wane. And especially against a Delta variant, something far more contagious, it does wane. So they took the vaccine earlier. Obviously, the efficacy waned. Then came along the Delta variant, which was more contagious. However, the one thing people love to bring this this thing up, and it's true, they did have a breakthrough infection thing. Um, first of all, Israel wasn't actually as vaccinated as people say. There was a large percentage of younger people that didn't get the vaccine. And even more so, if you look at those rates, you'll see the majority of people don't go to the hospital. The death rates are down. The hospitalization rates are down. So, yes, it sucks that there's having a Delta variant outbreak, but it's thanks to the vaccine that they're not actually having another pandemic. They're not actually having more deaths. So it's all, that all the people in the hospital dying in Israel are already vaccinated and yet they're dying anyway. That's not, so it's not true stopping that them. all the people. So according to uh, yeah, health ministry majority. data, the rate of serious cases among unvaccinated people over age 60 was nine times more than the rate among fully vaccinated people of the same category. Um, let's see what this is here. Can we move to the next question, Hunter? Or do you want yeah, to Yeah, we, we can go on, but that I mean that is literally the answer. That's that's why it's hap that's why it's happening. Gotcha. So but the, okay, but uh, Hunter, does it do so, okay, so, okay, so they're not they say that the, this vaccine won't stop the Delta oh, variant. Sorry. So shouldn't we just get a new vaccine One second, that will? All right, go ahead. I'll just keep talking while he's on the phone. All right. So the thing is, is that's my question. If, if he's saying the real risk now is this Delta variant. Okay. So shouldn't we stop the vaccines, do whatever tweaking they want to do, make it so it actually stops the Delta variant and theoretically better yet the next one as well, the mu or whatever it is. And then you can start your vaccination again. But we're not seeing any kind of circumspect, you know, rational backing off. It's, it's still just going hard for the one that's set up for the alpha variant, I guess. I apologize, but... Was uh, that the deep state, Hunter? What's that, the deep state saying? Yeah, that, that, they, that was Hunter, they, they. They called me. <laughs> Apparently, they uh, poisoned my daughter. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> Unfortunately, my daughter's Dude. actually throwing up, though, so... Oh, I think I am gonna by the way, by the way, I was sorry to kind of see what happened this morning on Twitter that nobody deserves that. So, uh, but the guy actually, it turned out I don't know if it was actually his account. No, he didn't. He didn't. We looked into it, but I'm still, I, I fucking hate seeing that shit. I think well, you're, that's why I got so aggressive. I think you're on the, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're fair game, but people should leave people's families out of shit. And that's what I yeah. always say. Go after me. That's fine. But really, no, that's why we say I, keep one in the chamber, Hunter. Yes, go. I do go. It does say the good news is that among Israel's serious infections on Thursday this week, according to health ministry data, um, hold on. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. So it's still the unvaccinated that are at a greater risk of having serious infection. I guess I already, I already went over that then, but, um, Sorry that I do have to kind of cut out early and sorry oh, it's to my okay, own. man. No, you have, your, have a good day. Right. Yeah. Thanks for coming, bro. Nick, I appreciate the yeah, conversation, man. I know I came in kind of hot, but that's because right. I really care about this shit. I I'm being paid big Soros bucks. Well, so, you know, and it is, it is the crucible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah you would, it. It yeah, was the you crucible. Would call, yeah. uh, we would class you as like the berserker. He's just going to bust through this freaking gate. <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen. That's what always so. happens when you have me on here. Have me on again. <laughs> what is that? That sounds like Hunter. Is that what happens? Is that every time Nick walks in the room? No, I'm just kidding. Exactly. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys. I'll see you later. Thanks again. All right. Thanks for the right, combo. I know I came in a little bit hot, but truthfully, I think that it was well warranted. I don't hold back on these fuckers. And if they're going to spread misinformation, they're fair game in my opinion. And again, we're on the show, The Crucible, bro. Come on. <laughs> Yes, thank you guys. Hit that follow button. Really excited about my uh, my growing Twitch page here. I cannot wait to stream longer. I was hoping for a long stream tonight, but now my daughter is sick. I'll have to stream again tomorrow, but either way, guys, love you. Click that follow button. Show your support. I'll see you all soon. Peace. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified when I drop a new video.